Okay. We're we're hitting. Thank you so much for visiting me again. Penuel the Black Pen. Welcome to the virtual Mkuku. Long time no see. Good to see. Spud, how are you? Okay. No, I'm good, bro. Oh, I'm from work. Black, black industrialist. Yeah, I'm from work. I was at the factory. So there's safety precautions. You have to wear certain things. You have to cover the beard. You have sure. to wear these coats. So uh, even it just slipped my mind. Ah, uh, you don't have to take it off. You can leave it on. Oh, is it? Please oh, leave okay. it on. Ah, no, yeah, she's an Oshai skip. I think she's skip. No, I want to buy like a seven in you. So you can't get a spanner. <laughs> good to see you, bro. I missed you. How have you been doing? No, I'm good, bro. Nah. How's the hustle? How's more fire? How's the factory? Ah, no. Things are great, man. Unkulu, 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 you know? Yeah. Yeah, Gabon, I'm for it. I mean, I always just appreciate waking up in the morning, just being alive. Everything else I say, it's a bonus. You don't speak much about the struggles of more fire besides the fact that you need more people to support, more distribution outlets to, to come on board. The struggles that you face, uh, I'm going to mention his name and I apologize, but this is only because he posts on X on Twitter, Ubabu Kandani Msibi, who's been under curatorship because of the insurance business. And there, there's a reason to, recent to Baba, I just, I'm not sure of his name, but it's come out that his shareholdings are 19 billion and his shares at Capitec are close to 2 billion. But his insurance company has also struggled. And in the interest of business and the economy, you realize, oh, Daki, especially struggle to speak about their shortcomings because they don't want to upset too many people. And at the same time, they don't want to tell a negative story that might make people feel some type of way. Any other struggles besides just getting people to fully believe in the brand that you guys have encountered, especially once you have a factory. I stress about production. Last year, we spoke about the cost of aluminum cans. If you've ever been affected currently with our political environment, inflation, interest, and those things, um, ah, this guy's drinking our props. Ah, yeah, man. No, please go for it. Please Thank you, by the way. Thank you, by the way. Thank you, by the way. I'll I'll move the can back there. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Please. No problem. I'm trying to see you again. Yeah, shang ane pat nena. The the passion of um product placement and just branding. Yeah, it's been quite an interesting journey. Thank you so much. And I think um the first thing I'd like to say congratulations to you guys. Thank Congratulations you. for the growth of the platform. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to all the other alternative voices that are growing in the country. So people have got, um, you know, different alternative platforms to go air their views. Please mention some of the ones you want to mention. Ah, oh, geez, there's a lot of them, man. Gokos Koteni, uh, yeah, we had yeah, a great podcast. Yeah, we had a great successful interview with her when she visited me. And I encourage you to start her own podcast. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that she went and executed because mm -hmm. a lot of us learn a lot of things online, but we don't implement the Correct. good things that we think we're learning. She went and implemented, yeah. and I appreciate that. Um, I think it's one of the biggest podcasts in the country right now because already she had a very successful platform. Yeah. And I like the fact that she took advantage of that and plugged in a podcast, which is really creating a lot of beautiful, positive conversations. The Sobering Podcast. Yeah. Um, proud of the boys. The guys are growing. I've been watching their podcast from when they started. When I was at um, Atlanta, I think about a month and a half ago, at the um, Revolt World, it used to be called the Revolt Music Festival. Um, doing some work with them. So, you know, I was there and having a conversation with the executives at Revolt, it was great that they actually are aware of the Sobering Podcast. That's dope. And they told me behind the scenes, which I will not say much, <laughs> they're actually having chats with the guys. Okay. So I hope something positive and positive spin-offs come out of that. And that's what I was saying also last, last year, Nauti. I like the beautiful energy that is coming out of South Africa and just the talent that we have. When it blows up all over the world, it's good for all of us. Sure. You know, all of these other individuals that are doing extremely well overseas, it brings a lot of eyeballs into our country. Yeah. Whether it's the Ama Piano guys, the, the musicians, the DJs, the comedians, the actors, the actresses, it's good for our country. Because mm -hmm. then people come look as to what's going on in Zanzi. They look at the culture. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, it was a it was a beautiful surprise to find out to go to the the revolt guys know about their sobering podcast and they're having chats with them. And I also want to give props to other podcasts. McG um podcast and chill recently reached a million. Yeah. Filled up um San Arena, ten thousand people. That was incredible. I was there as well. I enjoyed that. I always enjoy seeing people succeed. I was also a part of that podcast when it started. Mm -hmm. I was having 
conversations with McG when we were starting the podcast, even throughout building it, I'd have conversations from time to time, been on the platform a couple of times. So one sort of uh, admires other people who build. Mm -hmm. So the reason why, before I get into your answer, no, no, no. Please take your time. You can we can speak about alternative platforms. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to more fire. We've got time. Yeah, the reason why I do so is because I respect people who build. Mm. I respect people who build from scratch because I know how what it takes to build from nothing. Yeah, I know what it takes to fail. I know what it takes to go through hurdles, difficulty. I know what it takes to also face the government and the system. Mm. Um, it's a very difficult journey. It does get lonely at times. It's not an easy thing to do. And still talking about the other platforms, I would also like to pick up El Tito. Mm. He's built something beautiful. Yeah. It is growing. He knows the culture. He's been a rapper pretty much his entire career. Um, we come way back with El Tito. Our mm. careers pretty much grew sonke. You know, we're all in the game around the same time from seeing Doana Nabu Clio, mm. Nabu Double HP, and just seeing El Tito evolve into, you know, podcasting and having such a, a platform that is blowing up and doing well. That's also incredible. Yeah. Um, how many others? There's many others, There's man. Many, but what makes... Rappers Chichi Lamain. Sobering yeah, is Gigi, smashes. Gigi. Uh, it's a multiple guys. I think by like, four. Okay. By five, three, no? Three guys. I yeah. just want to confirm if it's... Okay. Please carry on. Mm. Shout out to Gigi um, Lamain as well, man. Yeah, shout out to the... The... Um, the is it the Senti Twins? The sisters, man. Yes, I've seen that. They've got an incredible podcast as well. Engaging issues. Amazing, beautiful platform. And I have to pick up um, Gigi Lamain as well. But also... Um, Ah, uh, I just forgot. I just forgot. Ooh, Lord, um, ah, man, I love giving. Um, oh, Skim GP. Yes. I think it's Shout out to Skim GP. A nice niche, now. Because, you know, he's shared about his story. A lot of us know his life story and the fact that he was in prison. I mean, I, you know, a lot of us have been following his work for quite some time. And for him to come and reform and change his life, write a book, best selling book, write another one, do tours, do schoolwork, and just serve the community consistently. Because other people come out, probably do it for like six, nine months. Yeah. And then from there, they're like, ah, at least. You know, smoke screen, yeah, and about sure. good things, but it's fine. Sure. Let me move on with my life. But I like the fact that he's still committed to doing community work. So shout out to Scheme GP, built a beautiful platform as well. His niche is um, I think it's prison stories yeah. and just guys who used to guys who've changed their lives, guys who used to do crime back in the day, but who've reformed and changed their lives. And I think it's a great platform. I listen to those stories a lot. I'm seeing a lot of YouTube channels, I'm seeing a lot of young guys starting their podcasts as well. There's the Limpopo podcast. I like that. I like the Marcelo Simon show. I'm seeing a lot of guys even Nasekasi, they put in, you know, microphones as Tratini, Bakota and just con so you you just see this mushrooming industry of um, internet broadcasting yeah. in a form of podcasts, and and I love that. And yeah. I just I just had to take my, my my time to to congratulate you guys. I'm very proud of you. I think me and Pan over the past two years or so, and obviously many others, we've been the advocates of um, saying, guys, start your own things. Mm -hmm. Guys, learn from us. Go do it better. Guys, you don't need much. You can just start with the phone. Guys, you can just start with entry level equipment. You know, and we see that you guys are doing something. And I think from time to time, it's always good to not only complain. But now, born a good benzum, say benzum, mostly, ubang nom, you know, but in doing a year on you. Business in South Africa is not easy. No, before we get to business, I'm sorry. The okay. podcast, uh, I think I was looking for podcast. I was confusing it with oh, the podcast, okay. Yeah, I was confusing it with the sobering podcast. Revolt in Atlanta in the USA, they were they were speaking about the sobering podcast. That's pretty yeah. dope. Shout out to all the podcasters, man. And you've been at this game, you've been in this game for decades. Um, I've only recently been getting known and what helped was aligning with a huge brand like yourself the number of people that come up to me even to this day and they just want to be like yo of it please tell us buddha we send greetings when are you dropping new episodes it it makes me emotional because number one it reminds me because i've been a fan of yours forever it reminds me of how much you inspired me I think of people like Oba Pusha, who we've had on the Hustlers Corner yeah, as well, yeah. who've also been like, yo, we're inspired by you. I had Melody Mia here, who was also like, oh, DJ Sbu. Ntlantla Lux, another one who's like, Sbu, that's Sbu Gelagini. You've been in this game for decades, and minanguma figi zolo, but you look at how many people's lives you inspire in real time, and it's almost like it still doesn't get captured. 
people that are going to be like, I started this podcast because of the Hustlers Corner, because of Yves Chomkuk, because of Uspuda, because of Upen. And it's not documented enough. And it still seems like we're missing it somewhere because when, when the media articles run, it's always on the negative stuff. It's never on, we now have this many new podcasts. Trevor Noah, Trevor Noah started a new podcast as well. It's yeah, congrats on, congrats on Trevisto. Shout out to Trevor I was Trevor actually checking Noah. out his episode with um, The Rock this Dwayne morning. Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, yeah. yeah. And when you speak about South Africans, so that's locally and the media. That doesn't... I think sometimes I even watch mainstream media and even when they speak about podcasts, it's almost painful for them to say. They'll be like, popular what to what seen on alternative on an alternative media platform. They won't say... Uban Bane, that was on the Hustlers Corner podcast with DJ Sbu, dropped something that was, they still almost treated as. The amount of amazing work the Springboks have done in bringing hope. Then you look at the pro tiers now, you look at the, our outdoor and indoor hockey kids or young people that are winning. Shout out to Tyler in America, shout out to Musa Keys. Uh, even Trevor Noah is nominated at the Grammys. And you're going to go into business now. But you don't see that support from the leaders politically. And maybe we'll see some of it in business, maybe not as big as we'd like. A lot of people are criticizing seeing Johan Rupert congratulating the Springboks and Rassi and inviting them to his farm. And it's like, but that's what business should be doing. This guy, some of his businesses fund the Springboks. But we're not getting enough businesses. You have to go and start him on fire to support your own podcast. When there are so many other businesses there who should be like, Ntwana, whatever you're doing, we will take any little bit of money and we'll, we'll pump it into your podcast because your platform and all these other platforms don't want us. And because you're speaking for us, we'll make sure that we blaze the trail. But it's not happening. As Uma figures all of this stuff makes me emo. When you know there's people on the ground you're affecting. It doesn't touch you. Of course it does, Penzo. Congratulations to the Springboks. Yeah. That's incre that was incredible. That was beautiful. Sort of gave you that um, smiling going to France. <laughs> you know? But it's like you got to get a Schengen visa C first. Yeah, yeah, France. Kev. With Abu Clive Park and Abu Neil Tov. Yeah, Kumbul. Yeah. <laughs> um, my Schengen visa had expired, but also I had other commitments. But I would have loved, you know, to have, to have gone and experienced, um, you know, that type of atmosphere. But congratulations to the Springbok. And I think to the Springboks. I hope our soccer guys and young people in Makassi are also learning yeah. uh, and are inspired by the guys, right? And sp specifically talking about um, Johan Rupert, excuse me, um, I do know that he owns a company that owns the um, Iced Tea Drink Boss, B-O-S. Okay. And I do know that um, I stand to be corrected. Please don't uh, don't quote me on this one, yeah. but you can read up or research on it. But I think they're working on a. I don't know if it's 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 it's, it's M and A measures and acquisitions in, in in them being acquired or they've just raised huge European um, million. What is? Ah, uh, let me say European funding yeah. or global funding. Yeah. Right for the boss IC. Obviously, I'm in beverages. Sure. So being a local brand, the BOS, by the way, it's a local brand started by entrepreneurs from South I Africa. I did not know that. Yeah. So you must know. Yeah. So now you do. Uh, as you say, good to Dr. Johan Rupert, some of his companies sponsor the Springbox. Sure. What I wanted to say is big up to him that one of his companies, the boss Ice T, mm. that Mr. Johan Rupert is a shareholder mm -hmm. of. Uh, and 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 and, I, and 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 it's not a a a current thing. I think since a couple of years ago. Sure. Sia Kolisi is is one of the shareholders. In boss. Yeah. Hectic. Yeah, and, and, and they've just uh you know, I think um coined themselves some 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 very good big international funding. But as I'm saying, don't quote me on it. Yeah, yeah. Go do your own research. But I just wanted to congratulate Sia sure. and say he's a symbol of hope and an inspiration to us and to say as much as we are having it harder in building from scratch and mm. in experiencing this difficulty mm. in getting this thing off the ground over the past ten years. We did it such that there'll be such moments mm. where, where um, future talented, amazing South Africans can be seen good enough to become shareholders of these big opportunities. Yeah. Pay me in, what, what does Beyonce say in that song? Pay me, pay me in equity. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't give me a check. 
because I'm going to go buy a house and a car, even mm. if it's five million, then it's gone. Sure. But bring me to the opportunity, bring me to the table mm. and say, good to see a colisi. We don't only just want you to go and lift this thing up sure. and get your fans buying boss. Sure. But we want to have a conversation where now you become a, a shareholder, you become a part owner in this incredible South African brand that is uh, being exported. By the way, it's big in Europe. It's also doing very well. And it's one of the brands that inspire me. One looks at their model mm. and what they've been able to do. So as much as we, we might be against white monopoly capital, sure. and every time that day, um, Mr. Um, Rupert's name comes up. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of us sort of, we just have this mindset of just blocking, hey, white monopoly capital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes it's good yeah. um, to give props when people see talent and they sort of collaborate with it. So big up to Mr. Rupert for um, seeing something in Sia. Yeah. And, you know, having him as a part of Boss, I'm looking forward to be seeing the brand grow and seeing some of the work that they will be doing in the future. But more than anything, I'm proud of um, Usia Kolis and the team. I don't know if this is the right time to mention Robot Boy, because I see Usia Kolis has got a limited edition Peach Roy Boss, Boss Ice Tea. Yeah. So he's got his own. Yeah, he's got his own, in but he's also way, but he's also a part a, of a the uh, of the business. But I mean, they've Too been around for quite some time and they've done really well. Um, Robot Robot Boy is somebody that I've known for almost a decade now from us in Indiana. Sure, you know, um, we had a great opportunity to work with Itai Malake, who's somebody I also look up to. Khrutman Umzwakembuli has been a very big part of our struggle here in the country as one of the poets who's, who was also very vocal mm. um, in being in sending messages out there that were against the uh, previous apartheid regime mm. that was oppressing black people. So I always give him props and, you know, we had a great opportunity to work with him when I was still doing music with TS Records uh, and Zahara. There was a Mandela collaboration mm with Antatem Zwakimbul and Zahara. Okay. That was a big song. Nelson Mandela, Tara Madi. I don't know if you remember. Mm. Father Lord of the well. Nation. And, um, and I'm glad that Utata was alive for Zahara to go sing um, for, for Utata him. live, yeah. right? And um, that gave me an opportunity to work closely in a time, you know? Uh, I mean, not a lot, but at least a, a couple of times to be next to Khrutman Umzwak. Yeah. Very, very conscious, extremely intelligent yeah. gentleman. And now Bonumzi, or robot boy, that's like Umzuake, exactly. Sure. Tall, you know, he voice like a very bold, confident, speaks well, and um, rich with history. Just yeah. wisdom oozes out of that man. Yeah. You know, and, and there was a moment where, it's, where he had said to me, um, Lazen, in Dona, I can learn a lot from you. Marindona man, if you go to it, don't you like telling me about it? Mentorship, me and just tell me my message. Let me know. Yeah, boy. Marindona, I think there's something there. Yeah. Because we're born and now the day we meet. Um, to cut the long story short, the rest is history. Jeez. Today, I'm zero robot boy. You know, um, it's a partnership with robot boy seeing potential in Mufaya before it became what it's becoming now. Yeah. Since back then, he understood what the vision was, what we wanted to achieve. And we are around the same circles. Spanani Tamala, Kengai, UTK, got connected nine, no robot somehow. Or robot, but he was still punding. Yeah. Church boy, a lot of people don't know that he's also a drummer mm -hmm. and a comedian. Good one, by yeah. the way. Uh, and that's another podcast that's on the McG um, podcast network. Pop, Pop popcorn, popcorn and cheese. cheese. Yeah, let, let Pop me Pops and Robot Boy. Yeah, let yeah. me give him props for that as well. Um, and um, it's been great to see Robot Boy grow. Mm. He's also one of those people who learns and applies. Yeah. I invited him when we were starting Massive Metro. Zorala and Toanang, Shaila Roundy. Whenever you've got time, Shai Roundy, you're more than welcome. Zorala Keys Avenue, Rosebank. Shai and Toanang Roundy, Shai and Toanang Roundy. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. Yes, Massive Metro. And at the time, we were running Massive Metro. Mzi learned to shoot. He learned to edit. He learned everything else that had to do with radio. Yeah. And obviously this digital space at the time. So all these celebrities, when they would come to Massive, even for interviews, he would create relations. He would yeah. create relations. And that's pretty much, I would say, uh, how, um, uh, needless to say, good very time like mm -hmm. So oh, um, he's been in the industry all along. But yeah. now here's a platform where he's at a space where he's meeting all these different industry guys every day. And as, as being himself, Z. not as his father's son. As yeah, himself. as himself. And yeah. I wonder about that later. Sure. Abanya still don't even know today. They don't know, yeah. yeah. But Dintana was there. 
he he committed himself. He was always on time. Indona wanted to learn more. Indona now guy task. He executes it. Now um guy anything to edit, he will get it done. When I used to sell Mofa in the streets, the person behind the camera was him. It was a robot boy. Mm. And then I look at it now like it's his time to shine. Yeah. But as he's shining, um, Mz said no to a couple of other brands who you know offered him money, mm. even other competing energy drinks brand brands. That he said no to to the bag, and we don't. I can imagine he's a dancer, and in dance there's a brand alignment. Exactly. So energy brands would want to energy drinks would want to be aligned with him because we are dancer. Mm. And he's also a rapper. Yeah. A m- musician and he's clean, sober minded, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. Church boy, loves church, goes to church all the time. Multi talented, mm-hmm. incredible, incredible human being. So, uh, by the way, we don't pay him. Um, for now, he's still not part of the business in terms of shareholdership yeah. yet. Uh, the work has been incredible, mm-hmm. uh, and the work that is happening now, as our relationship grows, is also a form of um, the brand appreciating his loyalty yeah. over the years, and him growing to become his own guy. Um, Nami also becoming an older guy. I also know that he also appeals to younger guys, sure. right? So it's also right for the brand to now start having other representatives, sure. not only just Usbuda. Sure. And also that was also the concern with the, the public over the years. Which is, is it going to be just Mofai Asbu? Mofai, is it going to be a moment where this brand develops a life of its own at Correct. some point? And people would criticize me for yeah, that. Yeah. Ah, this brand is just all about Asbu, Asbu, blah, 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 blah. And I used to say to people, guys, we've got a strategy, we've got a plan, we've got a vision, we're going somewhere. Yeah. And as we keep growing and we start getting a little bit of cash and you know, we'll use our creativity and our relationships to sort of position this brand where it's supposed to go to, but it'll, it will there will come a time where it develops a life of its own. Sure, and I think me. we are slowly starting to see that now. Sure. With the Robot Boy, um, there'll be there'll be a whole lot of others with Miss SA. Shout out to the Miss SA. Shout out to the Miss SA deal. Mofa is the official drink sponsor as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. The Miss South Africa pageant. And we've just released a brand new can. Um, so the very same can when they had um, course, uh, what is it, challenges. Yeah. When they were, before the Miss SA winner was announced. Sure. We promise that um, they will create their own cans, come yeah. up with their own marketing campaigns, and Mofire will manufacture that can for them. And that can just came out last week. It's too dope. And um, big up to Natasha Joubert, who is our current Miss SA. Mm. And I also would like to um, congratulate all the other contestants who participated in mm-hmm. Miss SA. It's been incredible. But then you're starting to see now, Robot Boy, uh, Natasha Joubert, Miss SA. Mm-hmm. So you, people are sort of slowly starting to see these layers unfolding of this brand growing, right? Mm-hmm. Just like what we've done with all our other local heroes that we've been looking yeah. looking up to and all these local businesses. And even the current ones, younger ones, sure. your Patus and your Drips and your your Rich Minisis, et cetera. So yeah, that, that's the outside of it. That's is the, it. Is it, you know, imposter syndrome, you get into a space, you're DJ Spoo, you go to America and people go crazy. DJ Spoo and you're like, this can't be me. In Dona Setembisa, this cannot be happening. Do you have those type of thoughts when it comes to the brand itself? I, I saw you post, you were visiting some place and there was a can of more fire in the dustbin and you were like, I, I cannot believe this thing. And at the same time, you know, I was sitting with Likao from Trip, Likao Sihoana, and one of the things he tweeted, I think, recently was he's built a business from scratch, as you were saying, and he's like, it's so difficult. The idea of doing it again just, it sounds tough. And it's maybe one of the reasons Mark Zuckerberg has never built another company. He rather acquires, because it, it looks like there's a, a serious pain. So number one, you've raised, you've birthed, and you're raising this child and this child is doing well and now you're watching this child how does it how does it feel seeing that do you ever s- struggle with i always saw brands endorsing big pageants i always say brands with trucks now i'm here and i i don't know if it's the real thing or maybe maybe this is not how they were doing it maybe they had bigger budgets or maybe this is also how they started i i don't know and also the the pain of watching your child grow and the criticisms and the struggles in the beauty of what people don't see on the other side. I remember going to um, a Dube. There was a show at Chiskop. Dube is Soweto. Yeah. Um, Mendoza, SB, rest in peace. General Tatazonke, Gadwell, my brother. Um, 
who else? It was SB Caesar. Rest in peace to Caesar. Also, Chisco. Yeah. Young guy, still fresh. Before Mendoza embarked on his own solo career. To become a superstar. Somersaults on stage, killing it. These guys, <laughs> army gear, Timberland boots, somersault, I'm a print for it. You know, hey, we had claim. I was a fan, bro. Yeah, I remember when the first TKZ EP came out. Not the Take It Easy. Sure, Take It Easy wasn't as big. I think um, the one with um, Palafala. Palafala. Oh, Palafala. Yeah, Palafala. Not, Palafala. Not to be confused with Palapala. Yeah, Palafala. Palafala. TKZ, Zoi. And you know, South Africa's um, greatest quite lyricist of all time, may so rest in peace, my cash. About the kush kush cash, heavyweight tiger. Keep it as on, I know my lipila. You know, um, every time when I recite his lyrics, like I get goosebumps. Yeah. Because I remember from being a fan. Um, mm -hmm. I remember being backstage at a was a 2000 event. Was a 99 or was a 2000? <laughs> Uh, uh, that's yeah, New Year's Eve. Yeah. Those New Year's Eve it's celebrations. The this, this, these, all these moments I'm talking about, this is pre me getting into the industry. Sure. At the Mafugate um, backstage. So I was booked at that event. I was still an up and coming guy. Sure. But for some reason, I was booked to come and MC that event. It was in Kruger's door backstage. Um, Khurman Atama Fugate was Atama Fugate prime in the ah, music triple era. Nine. I was still a fan. But for some reason, I got that gig to come and MC. Sure. I didn't even care whether I was getting paid. I was just happy <laughs> just that so I'm to sharing a stage with these guys. Arthur came, went, came backstage and asked me, asked me my name. Mm. And then he told me that there's something in me. And he, he told me that I'm going to go far. And if I want to pursue a career in this industry, he is... Um, a call away, he gave me his number yeah. and he just said he likes me. And he sure. just said, I like the way you're dressed. I like the way you're doing your thing on stage. And for some reason, he voice <laughs> do you rap? Do you sing? Do you, you know, sure. do you do quiet? And I was like, wow, this is Adam Afugat. They're saying all these things to me. Why am I mentioning all these moments? I'm mentioning these moments because once I get into the business, then these people, some of them, you're making music with. These yeah. people, some of them, you're hanging out with them. These people become your friends now. Sure. These people, you're sharing numbers with them. And they're then, trying to get a hold of, of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll call you tomorrow, busy. You know, and then the next thing you are going on stage, you're winning an award. The next thing your track is blazing all over the country. And then you're like, wow. Like, can, we, can we take a moment there? The idea of hearing your song or a song you've been involved in. Yaz Maskulumang a festive. Mark really takes, Mark really motto. When people are trying to have a good time, it's it's your song. I can't explain that feeling. That man. must be something else. Yeah, no, it's um that's why I want to do sometimes the fame in Obapaisi. Sure. It's like clout. Sure. Let's say you are trending sure. and your social medias are getting followers and people are talking about you. You know, um, and then it happens again. Maybe it happens again. You're getting your followers growing, and some people it can get to their head. Sure. You know? Uh, it's same as fame. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's clouds coming here. It's the attention. Yeah. So it's up overwhelming. To how, how you deal? Yeah, with. your your mind can actually crash. So so it becomes so, um, like wow. I used to dream about these moments. Wow, I can't believe on the radio my song is playing. Wow, I and when you hear your song, Kambo Seke is at N or Selim Pop or Sona, and you're just hearing your song everywhere. One advice I'd give you is don't have beef with an artist who at some point is gonna get a hit record. Because at some point, no wherever you go, you'll be hearing their song, bro. Why am I saying these things? I'm saying these things because everything that Minano CPO used to talk about, and when we're putting together the team and inviting the rest of the other guys to start this business, um, as they happen now, now it's 10 years later, mm -hmm. right? As now they're happening, it's not like you're not grateful. Sure. Right? You've seen it before in your mind. Sure. But it's before it happened in reality. It's something that you knew that it was going to happen, but it was up to you and the team to make it happen such yeah. that that manifests in the future somehow. So so, so a lot of these moments mentally, I've lived them, right? I always say to people, when people say congratulations to you or when people are give you awards or mm. certifications or prizes or props, yeah. You are all celebrating an old dream. It's um, it's an old dream where the manifester of that dream and this person or the team that's been working hard to bring this dream to fruition, mm -hmm. mentally they, they've passed there. 
because that's what it takes, right, to mm-hmm. build because you've got a vision and you've got goals. And as you keep achieving these things, no matter how difficult it is, at some point, certain things when you start, I, I'll make you one example. We used to speak no spews. Finally, there's going to be a time, like Papa's was spelled. You know, we'd be so disappointed when they they turn us down or they don't list our products or we're having countless um, unfruitful meetings sure. and we are demoralized and it's tough and we're not making money and it's it's difficult. We used to encourage each other like that. Mfana, there's going to be a time. Sure. And sometimes there's no kutas and aranjalo. Laba baya sanya. Bazo spelela one day. All this arrogant language and this treatment of us niggas are on a marawante boy. Bazo saz. We used to pump ourselves up like that. And we used to say there'll be a time when Bazo is too malama email. Bazo will be a funama meeting. Nati. That day is coming. Yes. So those things are happening now, right? Sorry, sorry so, to disturb, Buddha. The sorry. importance of having a co founder in those times of Kutaza versus being alone. Yeah, it's important because I'm getting a kutazan. Sure. And at least Tina, we're gonna see no spirit pair. We've got sure. other people who are part of the team. So okay. Kutazan, I'm a phone call in a shama activity. Because I'm thinking even at TS, you also had a partner yeah. as well. Yeah, it's okay. important. Do you intentionally do that? Yeah, because I can't. I'm not a. I'm not a, a trained business developer. Okay. I don't know so how you to find someone with skills. Yeah, I okay. try and find my way. Uh, a team that can complement my weaknesses. Sure. And I play my role the best way I know how. Okay. Where, where my strengths lie. Okay. Right. Sorry, I forgot my train of thought. Sorry. Yeah. But one day, Yeah. So in the end, I got manager. What built our business was what in South Africa, in business terms, they call the informal markets. Mm. So you're talking wholesalers, you're talking cash and carries, you're talking your Kit Kat cash and carries, your Devlin cash and carries, your Osanga group. You're talking, and most of them, as you would know, most of those types of businesses in South Africa, that sector is run by the Muslim community yeah. who have been incredible and who are a very big pillar and a part of Mufaya's um um, success, I'll put it that way, for lack of a better word, right? And Mofai exists today to end up starting to attract the bigger retailers who are now slowly coming on board and listing us up because of these guys who believed earlier and these guys whom we've been trading with over the years. Yeah. And now we're starting to see uh, the attention grow into attracting um, bigger players now. So now we're starting to see this dream of ours, this thing we used to talk about starting to manifest. How does it feel like? It feels great, um, but it's not like a feeling where like you've arrived yeah. because you don't arrive, right? It's the growth, what about they call it growing pains. Yes. As you grow, bigger challenges come. As the company grows also, and um, the brilliant thing that we're able to do is, as this makes money, is to keep going and knocking on doors where we can get the right, correct players to come and help us run this thing. You need to remember, come from entertainment, yeah. pure as a minor, mm. etc. So yes, we might have the idea, we might have, we're just the entrepreneurs, but we need the properly trained business people who come from the FMCG or the beverage space, sure. who've either worked for any of these um, big drink companies before to yeah. come help us grow this thing and take this thing to where it's supposed to go to. And that's what we've done over the years. People call it what, like putting putting in systems and processes. Mm-hmm. So this thing is run by people who are qualified to do so, who mm-hmm. know how to build a business, who've built some, who've built businesses before. And I think the greatest um, gift that we gave ourselves with the team and we gave the youth of South Africa in the future was to um, um does it make it cooler? Yeah. Yes, yes please. Right. Thank you. Build this thing such that you are able to afford the right skill set that's going to come on board and help you grow this thing. Mm. And for us to be disciplined enough to not go crazy about immediate gains yes. and postpone getting money from the business, rather reinvesting into the business, was the best thing we could have ever done. Because if we were still forced all along, just like in the beginning, to mm. continue just being us and us and us and us, you know, um, 
you've never done this before. Sure. Yes, you're a game changer. That's a great idea. Yes, you're the entrepreneur. But sometimes you're pretty much not that trained to build a business to get into the levels at which you're talking about, where you're trying to go to. You need to get the proper professionals, the right people, the skill set to come and this, build. This is this a thing. lesson for young people with great ideas that there will come a time where you're just not good enough. See, yeah. a policy can't coach himself. He needs Rasi. And you must be okay with that. Sure. You must be okay with or that. Or else we can't fund the spring box out of his pocket. He needs to get a funder. Thank you. And you can't also be arrogant enough to say, it's our baby, it's our baby, it's, you know, and hog this thing. Because sometimes some certain failures are brought by because of such decisions. 100%. Sometimes you have to be honest with yourself and say, this is all I know. Yeah. This is what I can do up to this far. Sure. Some of the things, you know, um, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe, may so rest in peace, he talks about that. He will, he will give you the vision but it's not gonna give you the how. Yeah. You're gonna have to go through the process for the how. And the how part is the one that builds you as a person, no matter how difficult it becomes, but sure. he's building you and molding you to become that leader sure. who's gonna be good enough and be, be um, ready to handle the future upcoming obstacles and challenges and growth, right? And that's what, is, that's, that's what has happened. So, um, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, but at the same time, it's humbling. It doesn't bring any sense of arrogance and it doesn't bring any sense of we've arrived. We know it's only still the beginning. We know we've got a bigger fight to still fight. Are you looking at some point in hosting, I don't even know if masterclass is the right word, but hosting these sessions with young kids, well, I'm, I'm saying young kids, but it could be anyone. People that have products, maybe services, to sit in, in like almost some type of mentorship program where you go through everything and you're like, this is what you're gonna go through and no one is going to teach you. And a lot of us have struggled and at least we've walked the path. The next person got BE shares. He got there when the business was 50 years old. We want to help you guys fast track and skip certain steps so that what took us 30 years will take you 10 years or five years. Do you think there'll come a time or do you think maybe that is not your journey. And that's going to be maybe some of the observers of the Morefire journey, people on the side. I mean, you look at someone like Ufo Sitembewayo, he sometimes tells stories about other businesses and their business stories. Because there's a deep need, especially on the African continent, for young kids to fully understand the most boring and the most painful aspects of running a business. You look at Utangote, you look at Morefire now, we'll speak about Ipa, Tunetrip, Makosa, Tsepo Jeans, whatever brand you can think about. You're like, these guys are busy building a business and that's their journey and that's their purpose. Don't disturb them. But someone needs to be sitting kids down and telling them, guys, you're gonna struggle. You, you're gonna encounter that there's Indian Muslims that run the side. You're gonna encounter that there isn't a budget for marketing. I'm thinking I met the founders of, of Nando's, uh, Fernando Duarte and Robbie Brosen. I was just trying to find out when they, uh, they launched. I'll, I'll get the date. And when I met them back in 20, 2012, when I opened my fish and chip shop close to Gandhi Square, Robbie Brosen, when I met him, I just want to find when they, I just want to, founded in 1987. I met them in 2012. 1987, 2012. Nando's is almost as old as me. Robbie Brosen told me that it's weird that I'm meeting you now, I was 26 at the time. He's like, this is the first time we are making money from Nando's. And you're telling me the exact same thing now that we weren't making money. Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, it took 10 years to become profitable. And how do you teach young kids to, you want to build this thing. We understand you started it maybe because you couldn't get a job or maybe a kagi in Balambi. So it's almost a survival business, but this thing can become bigger. But now we need to teach you delayed gratification and that you must live in a four room or in an RTP or in a shack and you must eat to put on espionage. Don't take money. Yeah, but Buddha, we just signed a 2 million rand deal. It means nothing. Don't make the mistakes we made. Focus. These are the formulas you use. These are the things. Many Indian businesses sometimes become profitable on the third generation. The first and the second generations, they just pay school fees. They just pay bond. The third generation is the ones where now the kids are driving Ferraris and stuff. Because they're like, you know, my grandfather started this beverage company and in the RTP, in the RTP, I went down, I saw it everywhere. You're like, yeah, my grandfather told us what the vision was. And someone needs to teach kids these things, which you're not going to be able to build the Tangote company. Because not Tangato's fourth generation, number one. 
And number two, he says that for Tangote to become what it became, it took 40 years. That's, I'm asking if you're planning to do that or if you think it's someone else who's meant to, because we have to do it. I want to big up Robbie and Fernando for yeah, what yeah. they've done with Nando's. I think it's another company that has showed us, uh, you know, the possibilities that are out there. Yeah. Earlier on, I spoke of Boss being an international brand now as an iced tea. Nando's, if you go to Washington, D.C., you go to London, you go, you know, many countries overseas, you see yeah. Nando's. It makes you feel proud that it's a South African brand, yeah. right? And um, it's incredible when you follow the story of Nando's. And with that being said, also congratulations to them for also mentoring U Sepo. Yeah. I do know at some point when Tsepo was growing his business, he's in, he's in Hyde Park now, big up to him, so proud of him. Interviewed him on the Hustlers Corner sometime last year yeah. or the year before. They were there for for, for Tsepo. Yeah. You know, they were there in terms of mentorship, encouragement, messaging, um, you know, mentoring in Doana, man, making White sure- White business people mentoring a, a black light. Yeah. Very important. These stories. And and now he's built an international brand because yeah. Tsepo is an international brand. Yeah. Tsepo is a, is in Hyde Park. Yeah. And that's important. And I, I wanted to give him those props because sometimes we don't say thank you. Sure. And that's how I was giving props to uh, uh, Rupert earlier about Dr. Zintuano Sia. At least Zintuano would be high and I be mad. You know, so I would at least English is Garcia in future. It's one of those things. Tamala Kolali, what happened? You know what I mean? Type of thing. So it's a great thing. Zintuano Iyan Monyo. And big up to Tepa as well, I'm very proud of him. I do that by writing books mm. so that there is a blueprint. Sure. I do that by posting about my ideas, posting about my marketing strategies, posting about our challenges, posting about the journey that one we yeah. one is walking. Sometimes it's, it's um, the audience might not understand everything sure. because they're not within the business, they don't visit the factory, they're not in the offices, they're not privy to a lot of information in the meetings, etc. Sometimes I, they don't run businesses themselves. Themselves, yeah. yeah. But I try as much as I can to share as much as I can out there. And then um, I'm also honest about, I'm a flop, I'm a mistakes, I'm a losses, sure. and just the journey itself, right? Through books, Leadership 2020, we do maps, we do seminars, we do talks, we do all of that stuff. And we used to do AMA, AMA courses, short courses, mm -hmm. partnering with um, individuals that are captains of their own industry, mm -hmm. the likes of Khrutman, Hepin Chingila. Thank you, Khrutman, for all those years and those days when you used to um, contribute your time to be teaching our students marketing. Because mm -hmm. for me, he's my marketing guru, he's my hero. And that's why I'm such the marketer that I am. I've always been looking up to people like Abu Brahepin Chingil. Abu Khrutman, Abu Tebi Kalafeng, Abu Mama Felicia Mabuza Sato. You know, Abu Bulelani went on to go start his own thing now with um, Township Entrepreneurs Alliance. He used to be working for Leadership 2020, yeah. learning how we're doing all of those seminars and getting younger entrepreneurs. Abu Theo, they used to come to our Leadership 2020 seminars. Yeah. About, there's a lot of them that are now doing well, doing mm -hmm. their own thing, but they used to come and learn from us, sure. right? Because we understand, and, and that's what I've always liked about our friendship, Mina, now. Yeah. We're, we're put together by that common vision of wanting to empower Indoana sure. out there, sure. you know? And we ended up becoming brothers more than anything. And, 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 and that's what I've done in my own right. And we used to have a mentorship program. Leadership 2020 was an incredible, amazing business even all the way to starting a massive metro and the homegrown radio which was set up just strictly for young talent but yeah we need people that do the work that Abu robert kiyosaki and them are doing we need people that are transparent and open about teaching about the fundamentals of business but if there's anything that you guys can learn from is just being out there and yourselves mm -hmm. you know and we're not saying khuzugani um, no, we want it to be easier and better for you guys. But at the same time, the best way to learn anything is by being in the field and, and doing it yourself. Sure. Um, there will be those messages. You will read some books as a to overseas guys who listen to us, Abu Vuzitim, Abu Penuel, all of us. But if you don't put in the work yourself, if you don't get yourself up uh, out of bed in the morning, if you don't apply the teachings and the knowledge that you get, nothing is going to change. But sure. I, I totally agree, Uguti. We need more. But with that being said, it doesn't mean that there aren't any platforms or opportunities for young business owners to learn from. They're everywhere, man. Go to udemy.com. You can learn until you're blue. 100%. Go, go to YouTube. Sure. And for a lot of people share information daily. Easily. Daily. Free. And what I'm starting to see even in South Africa, there is more and more local people who are good at what they do, yeah. who are not afraid to start a TikTok account and start teaching and sharing knowledge with people. Sure. Mustafa, who's been on your on your show, shares knowledge. Yeah. Abo, Abo's Masabo, Abo, um, 
abo the money republic sboni so mchali you know he sometimes even puts in cameras in his seminars and then he takes that video he puts it up on tiktok sure. for people to learn right so I mean I'm very big on education as somebody who's just recently started learning the property real estate game yeah. I'm also very open about learning while I share knowledge that's why we we consistently do seminars yeah. we've just had one now we've got another one in 3 weeks so we do at least a seminar every month sure. because we want to bring people who know more about property I mean I always believe in learning by inviting other people who are good at it sure for all of us to share our skill sets and sure. teach inspire encourage give knowledge to others sure. but while that process is happening i'm also learning because i invited you to be the speaker sure. so when you are teaching the audience i'm also learning 100% because as i did say about mofire also would you know i've i've never done this before sure. but it was an idea and i believe that we could do it collectively as a team it's the same thing with real estate i'm not a real estate practitioner sure. i didn't learn real estate at school but as an entrepreneur i'm seeing an opportunity i'm seeing and i'm seeing bringing the right minds together and building this vision but while i'm at it i'm also humble enough to learn mm. but as i learn i apply so my challenge to them is you guys don't apply you guys don't apply you learn all this knowledge online but you don't apply sure. like you're learning every other scroll apart from celebrities and and trending topics yeah. is is information if you go to tiktok now yes if you look for dancing videos that's all you'll get because that's, that's how algorithms are sure. the mo- whatever you like they give you more of that sure. but if you start deciding and saying you know what i want to spring clean my phone job nyaka musha so zoqala kanje thina sidala sokuqalile endzalo yelanga ngo september abazoqala ngo chana 24 september yes sir Su- southern african new year yes sir abazoqala kabusha my let's say you want zika january mhlambe abama new year new year resolution and then if you can start saying let me spring clean my phone and unfollow all the accounts that don't add value in my life and let me start operating differently all this incredible information that i think can work for me online let me start applying and you don't have to go crazy apply ngancane ngancane sure. you've taught me a lot of things that i started applying at some point you were saying to me smoother pull out your phone and start recording videos online i started applying i started seeing a difference sure. um and a lot of the things that you teach me i would go out there and apply we used to speak about in our virtual cook episodes stock fella yes. we spoke about stock fells and how they operate in the country i went and i Careful implemented blowing. right yeah so what i'm saying is i learn from you and i implement i learn from other people and i implement so you guys go apply go implement all of this education and it's it's not up to us people who are uh abaye hambe iqala indlela to want to to be kind to pour unto you it's you who must chase us around it's yeah. you who must go do the work we're not going to do the work for you you must go do the work it's your life you're in the driving seat you're not rehearsing this thing what board access say ngoba next week next of next week life goes on says it khohliwe yokhumbusha yokhunjulwa abakini thina life moves on no matter how much you can get pissed off that's just how it is namna nga board manje nyo trenda vele tv bahlala umculo wami everywhere go to Two weeks, three weeks, people move on. Usburu pore na sma ante we move on. Yes, bro. <laughs> right? Those are harsh truths. Jesus. So if you don't apply now, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for some savior to fall out of heaven? Are you waiting for what political party to win the elections and expect manna from heaven and people knock and come and change your life? What are you waiting for? Like, why can't you implement? Why can't you put on? Just put this knowledge. to work to action yes you're going to make mistakes yes you're going to fail that's how we learn and that's how i learn mean and that's my advice to the guys out there i don't think ukuthi there isn't enough information there's everything now even youtube the YouTube. only problem is you it's you you know you know i meet so many people that are like hey open i want to meet usbuda i want i'm like first if you go on social media usbuda is always somewhere he's at home grown farm he's ekasi noble you can see and meet the guy yeah Well, no, that's not serious. Yeah. It's not me giving you a number. That means the guy is always somewhere. He's performing at this place. You can go and see him there. Truth or fact, serious. Do you think we're ready for and I wanted to give a shout out to Witness Mtaga? Yeah. When you spoke about property and education, I want to give a shout out to Nicolette Mashile. These were young people who as they got into property were also teaching simultaneously and meeting other people that have gone on. Yeah. When we mention all the names or Babu Happening Chingila with the Hurt Boys I think about Peter Vundla if I'm not mistaken yeah. um by the way people don't know that the story of generations was was um was was created around 
their first black owned advertising agency back in those days. Good so boys. a brother to Mr. Amfundi Vundla was yes. Peter Vundla. Peter Vundla's business partner was Abu Khurtman, Abu Hepin Chingila. And they had that um, head boys advertising in Sunning Hill. Mm -hmm. And Generations is a storyline for a soap in South Africa. I don't even think they thought it would last this long. But created around this new black um, middle class that was mushrooming, that was running their own businesses. And those are such people that when we have these types of conversations, sometimes we need to give them their flowers. Yes. Or do they portray black people as successful. They portray black people negotiating deals, wearing suits. Although yeah. now you put a generation, those <laughs> visuals is at that time. No, you put a my yellow face. Oh, 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 this is Connie Ferguson back then. But they were pioneers as a Mahrud man, you know, about yeah, yeah. Him so sorry, we can't get him in, no, but I just wanted wrong. to give him their flowers. The, the number of Africans, by Africans, I mean outside of South Africa that I've met, who have been inspired by generations, who will tell you that thanks to DSTV or SABC at the time in whatever African country, I mean, Zambia, Malawi, I, it was the first time they saw what is called black excellence in that generation's show. And they were like, one day I also, some of us are spoke, I, if I like I'm yeah. as an example. Yeah. Um, anyways, who's also probably a very big unsung hero in this country, Uman Felisha Mabuza as well, Mabuza, do you think now is the time to consider building something like a NAVCOC, where we've got this database of whatever or Dr. Sam Mutwenyane or Dr. Richard Maponya, may rest in peace, and others, they had a vision. We had BEE, which maybe wasn't really what we wanted, but here we are now with young kids, no special funding, no special training, who are doing those things because the, the platforms are fertile and they are hungry and ambitious and hardworking enough. Do you think there's, there's a half gap, whether it's Leadership 2020 or somewhere else, to create a platform to say, we wanna bring this entire database together, share ideas. All of these guys probably have money, but they're still banking with a bank that was created by a group called the Pruderbond, the false gas. They're banking at an Investec where a group of Jewish people decided. It's like, but guys, you guys already run businesses and industries, maybe, why don't you then build the latest version of African bank? We're not asking for much. Take 50,000, 100,000, and there's so many of you, and some of you earn in dollars and euros and pounds. Let, let's re-engineer, re-imagine African bank and do what needed to be done so that you guys don't need to be funding. And one or two generations from now, when people reference APSA and FalseCast and First Rent, when they reference Investec, when they reference whatever other bank, they're like, oh, we also have this bank because I'm a Khrotman and I also see at the time, they were like, oh, we need to do this thing because now it's ripe. It's fertile now. And also we gather and we are opening up intentionally and any kid that wants to come in, this is the criteria to join. I think maybe this is what our Black Business Council or Puto Sandile Zoom are trying to do. Here's this platform now, like a NAVCOC, we're ready. You shouldn't have to chase. There's a platform besides social media. We gather here. You can join us and help run an African economy. I hear you. I think there's a lot of organizations that help entrepreneurs. Mm. I think there's a lot of information out there on the internet. I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs in, and to also answer your earlier question as well, to add on to what I had said is there's enough inspiration, motivation, and, 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 and words. Sky Ninyu, man. Sky Ninyu, man. And then CP. Let us earn this new, invest in our businesses, fund our businesses. Don't just only give us lip service, right? And uh, it's been painful to build because I'm a Yamakhrut man whom you know now. Yamakhrut man are successful. Yes. Yamakhrut man can only do so much. I mean, sure. I appreciate Yamakhrut man who've been there in terms of, Namaste sister Rama Oled Wami, who've been there in terms of mentorship and encouraging and giving word of advice, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I understand they also have had to work harder mm. in building their own businesses and the mm. success that they have. Not good one feels entitled to my But for some reason, Mina, when I got into business, I thought it would be easier. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I really thought it was totally new. Of Somewhere. course, some DJ Spoo have built a great brand. Come on, I'm credible. I'm known. I can't struggle like the next Likao or Theo. They're not DJ Spoo. 
we knocked everywhere, bro. We knocked everywhere, bro. We we knocked on all the institutions. Instead, also what we got was some some institutions were very hard on us in terms of regulation, and and, and that's good because you learn a lot. Mm. You know, you learn a lot when you're in trouble, or when you learn you learn a lot when you experience challenges than when things are great and nice. And not good one has been entitled, but um. And I'm not mad at the fact that we never got help. Mm-hmm. But I'd also have to mention that an organization that sort of believed in us, although at a later stage, um, the process was the reverse, but they believed in Mofa and they sort of wanted to invest in Mofa. And I appreciate that. You mm-hmm. spoke about the timer, oh, Mr. Kandanim Sibi. I think he was also part of the leadership at the time, Numsa Investment Company, yeah. um, NIC. Came on board with Mofa, I think it was like five, five years ago or six years ago, sure. they pulled us and, you know, they understood our vision, where we were going. They they they, they offered an, a, a helping hand, yeah. you know, and, and they gave us, you know, a small amount of money somehow, although at some point, a few months later or a year later, had to be recouped back. Although we would expect, we thought that relationship would grow and it would sure. be bigger. And we thought, it would, you know, NIC would own a certain stake of Mofa and the workers, on behalf of the workers. And it was a great feeling and we had, were looking forward to that move, Minano Spiruti. Yeah. It's a great move. Sure. Let NIC own a stake in Mofa. Let the workers of South Africa own a piece of Mofa. Sorry, Spuda. No, I wanted no to ask. Uh, I don't know if Econ must go down or if you like ah, it. Into yeah, Sula. No, Nkren. Nkren. Nse for me, nye den ring. Nye den ring. He's on, he's on fire, on Mofa. Fire. Sure. Otherwise, nzo lose the train of thought. Maybe a clot. No, nje nje usbu nje kona zoba. Ah, Nkren, Nkren. Too handsome on camera. Ah, nje 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 and I see you thought they were gonna join and 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 and, and us with the team were like wow it's gonna be so great that workers of South Africa own a piece of this drink where it'll just be education taking place for them to understand Uti, this is where my money must go because I own a piece of it yeah. and they're in turn gonna have to go educate their kids but in this family we own a piece of that company so I am a cold drink I'm a energy drink this is our drink of choice in this home. So, you know, we had sort of thought about that, but unfortunately, um, you know, it, it didn't grow in a manner which we thought it would, but I always have to give their give them their flowers yeah, yeah. and appreciate in in, in, uh, in investment company and the leadership at the time yeah. um, for, for seeing potential in us. Do, do, you, do you think it was politics? Um, I don't want to get into it no, because you as you did mention it. also what they're going through yeah, and yeah. et cetera. Um, a lot of these things we'll share more okay. when we do write a book no and, and certain things I would like for my business partner to speak for himself was okay. Piwe, right? Okay. Uh, and certain things will be explained properly in this okay. book. Sometimes when you name drop, you can name drop, but say certain things up to so far. Fair enough. You know, you don't want to go Fair deeper, but I was just mentioning them. Yes. You know, we want money, Baba. Skinny spoo. Skinny spoo. Skinny spoo. Skinny spoo. Skinny spoo. Skinny spoo. Not more fire spoo. Skinny spoo. Nas. Give us the money. Nas came together with some of the guys that he grew up with. And um, some guys who had done well. Some of them had gone to Ivy Leagues. And some guys are very successful entrepreneurs. Came together. They formed Queensbridge Investment Partners. I think some, some something along those lines. Yeah. That invests in smaller startups. Yeah. Same as other entrepreneurs who get to do well, they form those types of funds mm. that fund entrepreneurs, fund small businesses. It's out there in the public. Shout out to my brother for filling up Medicine Square Garden Black Coffee. It's out in the public that coffee over the years has been um, on the ground mm. monitoring businesses that he thinks or he feels are aligned with his values yeah. that he can invest in. He's one of the few people who's done, who's done well in investing in small sure. upcoming startups from South Africa. Yeah. And I know Guti, there's others who are doing it, but I think there can be more. Shout so, out to Yoko. So, Sorry, Yoko is one of his success stories, by the way. Yeah, Payment Yoko, platform. exactly. And Naz is uh, Nasir Jones, rapper. Yeah. For people to know, he's a big tech investor as well. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's why I think where I, I think that's where South Africa is now. I think in Tona Melesi is guy new. It does not have to be a million. I mean in Tona now's guy hundred sixteen. It goes a long way. In Tona now's guy five hundred sixteen. It goes a long way. In Tona now's guy even a million. It goes a long way yeah. in running resources, paying the staff, and getting the guys to operate and see their dream, you know, yeah. become a, a reality. I mean that's my vision. Yeah. My vision is to you know uh, as you are saying come together with other entrepreneurs or other like-minded visionaries to come up 
with funds that sort of support um, smaller entrepreneurs. So one, what, what one is doing, creating and building this wealth, is to give back. Sure. So I'm creating it so I can give back. And sure. different initiatives, you know, they can see from the educational space, obviously the entrepreneurship space, and different sectors in entrepreneurship, whether it's agriculture, whether it's clothing, whether it's beverages. Mm -hmm. So there's just a big dream that one has for society, for South Africa. That's why one is working hard to create this wealth and having to come together with people like like yourselves and, and others to to make it easier for entrepreneurs. I think it's about time. I guy in yoga into one. See, it's really motivation. I, I don't want to say it's enough. In, in it can Dwana, never be in enough. Dwana, in Dwana that deserve it. I yeah. think it's important. In Dwana with the track record. But exactly. Me, me Speaking about Robbie and Fernando Duarte, um, Robbie Brosen, the founders of Nando's, I stand to be corrected, but they got a chunk of their funding from SAP to start up Nando's when they bought it as Chickenland from SAP. When they had a chance, there was a young guy, and I remember Robbie telling me the story because I ended up meeting the guy who was older then. They bought a stake into his business. It was a young guy, he was 26. His name was Carlo Gonzaga, and he was founding Scooter's Pizza at the time. He went on to build Taste Holdings, which was turning over a billion at some point. That's what you're talking about. You look at Johan Rupert. Johan Rupert obviously comes from his dad, Dr. Anton Rupert, but he invested in three guys who wanted to start a bank. GT Ferreira, Lori Depenar, Paul Harris what we call first rent today with FNB. He gave them that startup. And when you track Johan Rupert, there are so many other entrepreneurs he's invested in. When you track people like Nati Kirsch, when you track people like Jonathan Bear, it's a thing. Now on our side, it becomes tough. And I've said to Tubabu Kandanim Sib, and it's one of the things that he's passionate about. I know him do ceramics, I think is one of the, the guys he's invested in, that we need to invest in because we don't have a lot of these stories of Ubabuba and invested in this business. Do you know he actually owns a stake? And in the Nando story, by the way, SAP took a stake of Nando's. Let's say maybe 10% as an example. The Nando's guys, they took a stake in Taste Holdings. I can imagine Ukalo Gonzaga as well, when the time came, he also invested in, in certain kids. But you're very right that we need to, we need to look to, to do that as a matter of urgency. Transforming which is something you and I have spoken about, but I'd like you to cover it again. Radio DJ, you make music, you own a record label, you're a TV personality, you start a beverage company, you're in property now, at some point you're in crypto, I hope you'll tell us about crypto. How do you manage the, the constant morphing? And now you're a podcaster. There might be kids that when they see you, they're like, oh, DJ Smooth, a podcaster. You're like, no, Baba, this guy is, uh, you're like, oh, well, I've only seen him, on, seen him on The Hustler's Corner. This guy made music, really? This guy was on TV? Oh, I didn't know that. I just watched his podcast. How do you manage that morphing? And what lesson can more of us learn, especially from a perspective of don't ever limit your dreams to be like, now that I've made it on Y or No Cause or No Metro, this is me. Now I'm just going to be a radio legend and switch off everything else. I guess we are on and also it goes with the energy that you still have. I think I'm what, like a, uh, what, six years away from 50? Mm. I think maybe from, from age 50, one is gonna really slow down. Although one works so hard and one has worked so hard over the years, I don't feel like working, I guess because I'm one of the blessed ones yeah. that has been able to do what he loves over the years, right? So uh, one understands that one has to grow. Right, I mean, Umundu, I'm, I'm a Gemini, and they say about us, I don't know. They, they a lot of people say this. Ugutu, we get bored easily, right? Mm -hmm. Not good. I get bored easily, but I am in consistent growth. I don't know how long I still have to live on this earth. When I walked in through this door to do this show, I'm never gonna be as young as I was. Sure. What, like 30, 45 minutes ago when I walked in here? And I understand that. And I understand also that I'm not in control of how long am I gonna be here on earth. So I understand that concept of pouring myself out and making sure every second, minute, hour, day counts in me while I'm still here. I'm not someone who's on a holiday, you know? I'm someone who's putting in work. I've written multiple books. God has been great. They've gone on to become bestsellers. I've put out multiple albums. God has been great. They've gone on to become multi, multiple award-winning albums. Put together a record label, helped other people do the same, become a success themselves. God has been great. That was awesome. We're very young. And as one 
has added all these different caps. It's a matter of growth. Mm. You know, when my daughter was born, I wanted to do leadership work. I wanted to start writing books. I wanted to start encouraging people, doing seminars. I wanted to start learning business. I wanted to start making friends with other people who are business people. That's part of growth. Yeah. When I learn and I understand about cryptocurrency and I burn myself in the beginning, but at some point I understand that this is the future. I participate because yeah. I'm consistently growing and I'm a student of life. I humble myself to say, I'm gonna learn. And yes, um, one learned. And as you learn, you get burnt at some point. Yeah, yeah. It was a very bad, bad market. A lot of people would know the cryptocurrency market was very bad mm. last year, especially the last half of last year. The reason why I started becoming less and less vocal about crypto, multiple people on the internet, when you're in the crypto space, I guess even in the Forex space, et cetera, or any space that deals with money, sure. the, it starts attracting scammers. 100%. Especially if you're a public figure, like people like us, who've got millions of people that follow us. I started seeing multiple accounts of people who would follow you every time, even when you change a profile picture. Now, five minutes later, somebody else has already cloned that picture and they create accounts pretending to be you. Yeah. They DM people, they solicit monies out of people. Yeah. And one thing one has realized, which is sad in our country, is that there will always be some victims out there. Sure. Like no matter how many times you can say, well, guys, that's not me. Guys, I would never ask you for money. Guys, no. Guys, people consistently yeah. were getting scammed and they would get scammed out of profile profiles that look like it's me. Sure. And then I started seeing, uh -uh, this is messy. And this is going to, uh, I'm a business person and I'm growing in this business space and I don't like my name and my reputation being um, um, used to solicit money sure. out of people and, and scamming sure. people. So that's when I started becoming less and less vocal about crypto, sure. but I'm still a part of of, of um, learning crypto, participating in it, listening to others. I just don't share it publicly. And then one grows, one learns about real estate, one learns about property, the importance of land, different ways on how you can come up with a business model to, to crowdfund yeah. and start developments. It's part of growth. So yeah. one gets to do all these things as part of growth. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm saying, we didn't, now one has just started wanting to help other people. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point where I feel, oh, okay, um, most of it will be to help society because sure. you can only drive so many cars you can only own so many houses yeah. you can only wear so many clothes what are you gonna do with so much money bro i'm not gonna be those people me now who hog <laughs> my millions or who hog my hundreds of millions or billions it's a poverty mindset then. i'm going to literally spend the rest of my life giving back sure. and that's what i'm going to be doing so it, it's 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 inspired by growth but it's also inspired by the type of person i've always been i'm yeah. always hungry for new things i'm always hungry to achieve other things i'm a high achiever i've got the energy to work i can speak well i understand the south african market i'm passionate about entrepreneurship and i make moves i'm not afraid to risk yeah. right and it, i'm not like everybody else who is some of my friends when we started mofa back then some of them even now they're like yo Mfana, i regret why not i remember that energy and so fail sure so fail so you like we don't want to be risking, sure. you know? So as far as I say about people like me still have an appetite for growth to do more. And it doesn't mean that when one also starts slowing down, one will one will not be participating in business. I will be, but in a smarter way. Sure. I might not be running around as much as I've been, but I might just be throwing my money sure. over there and just saying, just in case this man is not like lento, you know, Titan the majority, Kichiman na lento na inyo. Marmi na msa benga di port city ra, ala lo mundlo abe part of that thing. Asong cheke la my interest to am and whatever, and then focus on the others. I don't know, sure. but but that's my vision. One wants to do better in the country. One wants to give back in the country. One wants to continuously do the work that I've been doing over the years, but with no money, but at least manage it. You know, and that's one of the reasons why it's like, so that we can do the type of work we want to do. Because yeah. I don't know, God, at some point, you end up being looked at as a glorified beggar. And for me, it started getting, it started pissing me off. It was, let me just go and get rich. Like not, let me not go, let me stop looking like I'm rich. Let me go really be rich. <laughs> let me go actually be wealthy. So that things are like, right? And so that things are peaceful. For me, look, it's fine to sacrifice at least 10 iron of my life mm. to go create serious wealth. 
so that at least in the private thing you can spend a range and open it And that's how we're helping people. I mean, investing in businesses, doing initiatives, like I say, putting together systems and processes, and somehow, as we're saying, building institutions that can continuously help so that Imali each channel you are in the right way. Because sometimes I wonder when you come there is no other one you can guys because nobody's guy and that is a rafas. Nobody but guy um paga ati marizo go through penyol no spudu penyol no spudu a sebas first time I'm a Range Rover. Seba yo begeli ba fana ba ba tin ay ba fana ba fana man guys. I'm a pogo pogo le France. You know seba yo begeli ba pogo pogo le France la pa na bu spudu na bu penyol seba ma LV head to toe. You know they're like how gents. Most of them you wouldn't say yeah paga ti ni why ma is any rafas. So for me mfuna inte injenga lezo but um. It's it's beautiful when one starting is starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. Even though it's difficult, it's not easy, bro. You know, you've been building this baby from the beginning with your team. It's not easy to build, and you you failed even before. Uh, I mean, I've you've failed. Your fish and chips I mean, thing. I've more failed than anything else. Same here. You Same went here. you went from looking rich to being rich, <laughs> but looking poor. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Do I look poor? Oh no! According to mainstream society, oh, right? Okay. They want to see you in a suit, to chefy. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Right? You speak about looking rich. Mm, Mind you, you don't mm. look rich, but you are. Rich. I don't know the things. I don't know how rich looks like. How has the African spirituality journey been for you? If you don't mind sharing, Sakina, Uhaka, trees. Everyone started worrying that you were you were going crazy, and then they were like, "Who's booming like this? I got chef. Smells fresh." He looks like he's losing his mind, and at the same time, you are like, guys, I'm going through a journey. Besides what I'm doing in terms of business and my own growth, and I'm a father of a beautiful daughter, Waradwa, I'm going through my own spiritual journey. In Zaluela, we sat with Tumkulun Tsingiza, we sat with Joshua Maponga, you've sat with Okokos Koten, you've sat with so many people. Abo Zamalek Giza. I I don't know if you if you'd like to share because you've said it's personal, but where you are currently in your African spirituality journey. So I was meant to release a book um by now it's supposed to be out now. Uh a publisher rejected the manuscript of the book and said, "Now, nah, I thought your manuscript would be better than your previous book, but it looks like you haven't improved and I expect more from you. So you've done incredible work in the past. Like we have to take it a level higher." You only work with one publisher, right? Yeah. Okay. So they they can gatekeep The no, they're not gatekeeping. I mean, they're just saying, "Look, we know your standard." I, I love Come what she up. brings to the table. Okay, I love the markets she gets me into. No problem. I love what she like. We've worked well together. Okay, we've done some incredible works, right? So and it's she's, not like a door was like, "Hey, go do something no. else," and there's other doors. No, it's you speaking to a partner, yeah, a publishing partner. Yes, and they're like, "Spuda, this is not you." Yeah, we we need a better song than this one. Yeah, pump it up, type of thing. Okay. right? So that's why I put the book on hold. I was like, "Okay, let me release it next year. Let me just." put out the music right because i was already um getting my followers excited people yeah. are like okay there's a book coming we're looking forward to this book a lot of people are anticipating the book yeah. right i mean spoke about the book not only on my podcast or social media i mean even about my podcast and chill so a lot of people knew good are we expecting it in what a book's coming before the end of the year from hotman so in what i says or gala marizo gala next year on june 16 so it drop next year okay so i'm really i'm rewriting from scratch so alega busha Ngenza ngama bomu kumenshina dideng so that amachita na out there they must also learn because it does not mean sometimes you go to uh international kadile and abantu sekumele ufile and i was i also acknowledge the fact that um Tracy would reject the manuscript because she could have easily taken it and said let's release it in time for the festive season sure. so that we cash out we cash in all of us sell books and let's make money yeah. but she was honest enough to worry about the integrity yeah. and the standards of the type of work you know that we've been putting out there yeah. and also she's got very she's very strict about her own name sure. which she has to align it all um put her name on something that sure. is you know immaculate work or yeah, yeah. black excellence or whatever you want to call it and um e e e e e e journey ami bengizo ichaza kahle nokuyicacisa kahle encwadini because sometimes on my podcast we do long format conversations sometimes they get chopped up and you don't really get a proper chance to explain certain things yeah. um it's beautiful i'm the happiest than i've ever been in my life although i've gone through the most difficult challenges than i've ever gone through but i understand such is life mm. with great um but in with great, great power comes 
great responsibility. Exactly. And I understand that. What I was putting through all those difficulties um, to be built, yeah. you know, to be able to handle the future that's coming my way. And I understand the future is bright. But there is no better education than the education of self. There is no better knowledge in life than the knowledge of self. You gotta know who you are. You gotta know whose you are. You gotta know where you're from. You gotta know itam ali itam ali itam ali itam ali itam You gotta know oli 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 oli. You gotta know where they come from. You gotta know things. You gotta know about yourself. You gotta know your family tree. You have to know your lineage, and that's what one has been doing over the past couple of years. Because if you don't do that, you are doing an injustice to your own children. Because that's so vile. Gangan gangan go more difficult yeah. for them to buy your search ink abayabo abantu anabako because abanya abantu se ba podile imnya kase hambile the more be- difficult it becomes because now they're a new generation se ba batali time al se ko time time al se ko gunzi ma for them to it becomes more 100%. difficult for them to trace their lineage and 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 where they come from and that's why I dedicated. Um, the past couple of years and just my life to say I have to really know who I am. I have to really know myself. I have to really, really understand my family tree. Understand the family. I said like, "Unfunu kava baanye enga ba tavi agatego abantu ana baga bom kuluami." Unfunu kava as much as I can kava, and that's why I'm unto ya zula zula na bo ankeli na bo malume na bo ba bo mane, and finding out your half siblings, you know, half brothers there, and that. That's what one has been going through over the past couple of years, and I think it translates itself to the public through the type of content one would create mm-hmm. online. Because mm-hmm. now, me, these people, as I bring them for my audience, I'm also learning. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that I don't understand. I'd yeah. like to encourage people to go check out an interview like Mpoa mm-hmm. That interview became so emotional. She's she's such a gifted sister. Mpoa Badim, you're amazing, my sister. You are incredible. The energy that she had in that interview, I think we did it at MPD Studios. I ended up asking questions not for the public; it was for myself. The way we got crumbling a corner, the way we ran kelis and a corner, the way I had goosebumps and the way I became so emotional. I even had tears in my eyes over the things that she was saying. I was learning so much from her. And every time I have any of those types of guests or any book that I open and try and learn from or any podcast that speaks. That type of um, rhetoric, I learned so much, new things all the time, and that's why for me, I was like, it's okay. I am going to learn as much as I can, not only for my kids now, because of being passionate about sharing knowledge. Mm. I'm also going to share as much as I can as I go through my own journey. So you will understand it properly when the book does come out. But yes, it's it's been an incredible journey. It's been filled with ups and downs. It hasn't been easy um, dealing with family, dealing with distant family members, dealing with others that you don't know who you are just meeting now, yeah. having memories and thoughts. You could this could have been done earlier while my father was still yeah. alive. You know, going through all those mixed emotions and a roller coaster ride of different emotions and different lessons as you grow. And I guess, apart from the content that would manifest itself to the public, I guess even the look. And I don't think yeah. I'm the only one. I think when people go through certain things in their life, um, that thing that which they are going through internally manifests itself somehow yeah. through the type of work that they do yeah. whoever that person is yeah. and mean somehow it manifested itself through my 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 content yeah. through the way i dress through the way i look yeah. you know I, i would say that this is all part of it you know it's it's not an intentional decision <laughs> you know it just happens on your own as you learn this consciousness Some reason, like even when I start noticing other people in the past, yeah. I start looking at about Steve Biko. Yes, I start looking at all of our African spiritually inclined people who yeah. are so spiritual. You find that a lot of them are about kami food, about sure. shefi. I was interviewing Itaima. Thank you to to Prof. Um, Dr. Loazi Lushaba in Cape Town a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago. Same thing. Now like I mean, I didn't say anything to him, but I'm like, laban laba won't give us all, you know. And it, it's not like me and fun fun and laba laba good decision. No, for me, it just happened on its own. And the next thing I know, when lockdown ended and everybody was shaving. Sure. 
sure. I just left my hair. Because sure, sure. now I was locked indoors, continuing with this education. But even before lockdown, I traveled to, to, to the pyramids of Giza. I traveled to Egypt. I traveled to Ethiopia. Went to the museum in Ethiopia. Learned about Lucy and the history. Learned about the um, Haile Selassie. Learned about, you know, the, the, the war and them defeating the Italians. I went to Tanzania. Spent some time there. Learned so much about our history. Learned so much about Kenya. And in drips and dreads, right? Because you can't learn everything in just mm. a single trip. But all these things sort of contribute in molding this person that I am becoming. Mm. And then now doing this content and getting all these African spiritual people to come and speak and share knowledge, it just keeps making me a different book. And how it manifests itself and to the audience of people who are used to seeing me in suits, in a they're concerned. Like, sure. Others are really concerned because they care. Sure. And I understand that. But it was not for me to sort of it was not for the public. Yeah. It was my own, yeah. I wouldn't call it selfish journey. It's, sel it's a selfless journey, but somebody else can say the act or the deed was selfish for me to not um, communicate everything um, through every step of the way. Because yeah. in the in general, as a scene, sometimes um, as in you, they don't need to be said yeah. in public. As in you, they don't have to be communicated. So it was just my own internal journey. It's been incredible. It's been beautiful. The hugging of trees is something I do. Trees yeah. are alive and people know that. We are all energies. We are all energy beings. Everything is alive. There's something that, you know, it's energy in a different form. This microphone, exactly. Or from the earth. Same as this plastic, same yeah. as this can, etc. That's how Mudang Angen. I was, hey, that's not no sinyama, no. Nagangen, I'm not. It's not this sinyama, it's energy. Right? And then, Konavanyo Mundo Kona Nagangen, I'm not noticeable. You feel like you're energy, you're changing. Energy, energy. Even when you go back to Batin, you get energy. It's just the frequency that you have to tap into. Energy, everything is energy, right? So, everything you appeal, it's like I say appeal. Grounding, you can even go test it. Go to the stores now and go get a, 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 a measurement. I forgot what they call that instrument. And ground the one um, terminal and the other terminal, put it on your feet. Sure. You need to remember that tattoo and was insulated. That's why it's not a rubber pants. You need to take pants and you need to pants. Energy transfers from the ground into yourself. Right? If you want to see the machine, you want to see the machine. If you want to see the foot pants, you measure it. You want to see zero, zero, zero. If you want to see the all of a sudden, you want to see the energy, one point sure. something. Like, what does this mean? So, it's not the appeal. Mm. Why is Ango Mazamba in Yao? Why Nabakita Bakita Basha? Transference of that energy. Like, bam, boom! Like, transference of energy. Like, why did our ancestors, oh, Coco, now Coco Bay to Bapile is cut a seat? Even life expectancy back in the day was, you know, a, lo a little bit higher than it is now. Where now, Abanduba Shona, and every year it becomes, lower. you know, lower and lower. Life expectancy. And so, yeah, all of those different things when I, when, when I pay you, I've been blown away, even myself, yeah. on a lot of this knowledge that I've, one has been attaining. And it's not a knowledge, uh, it's not knowledge that one can be brilliant in in two years or in five years it's a lifelong journey yeah. once you go down that rabbit hole there is no coming back and as you go down that rabbit hole deeper and deeper and deeper now it'll manifest itself there is some knowledge that you're attaining behind the scenes because you are becoming a different person now you're a different person you know they say such things you don't stagnate and just stay in one place forever so I mean it's been a part of my learning journey mm. and I don't mind being uh, made fun of I'm used to people speaking about me I'm used yeah. to being criticized I'm used to being being a laughing stock but also equally so I'm used to being celebrated yeah. I'm used to being given my flowers daily yeah. I get the love from South Africans daily wherever I go and I appreciate the love yeah. I get told how much I inspire people how much I've changed their lives I get a lot of love enough I can never complain when people make fun of me sure. I understand it's it. a very small oh, percentage wow, you know Mabang lands, mabang tuga. Sometimes mabang trend, mabang bishat, mabang segi segam. That's fine, right? Because it's not personal. Bayang na nga banya babu. Because banya babu they come back later and be like, "Hey, hot man, now it's mabang dey and it's trash." You know, and it's fun because it's also a nice way of learning. Yeah. Because once the youngster says to their parent, "Abu this musi so hagan al tar, ngan sa tar half," and then what happens to the old lady? The old lady is like, "No, agasan." 
Okaga is and then it becomes a teachable moment. Yes. And then I've also found others who, yo, once I started seeing you do that, I started going down my own rabbit hole of yeah. researching, grounding, and the hugging of trees. Wow, you actually upgraded my mindset. I didn't think, you know, and then somebody now has been inspired by um, whatever that was yeah. to go research themselves and they become better. Yeah. So me now, I think I'm, I'm becoming a better person every year. Like, um, and, and this journey that I'm on has been incredible for me. It's made me a better person. I was also very materialistic. Mm. I was crazy over international brands. Yeah. I was crazy wearing different Italian labels. I was, you know, that type of person also. Um, very mater materialistic, fine cars, sports cars, and just that fast life. Um, as ukula and as you learn and as you become more and more into understanding who you are, it'll manifest itself. It'll manifest itself through the decisions that you make. And then they start noticing how. Why are you having a Range Rover? Why are you having a G63? You know, sit there more far and some million. Why? Why are you running a local brand? Why? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why are you a car? Why are you a chef? Why are you a? But sometimes you'd rather not explain. I love the fact that you're saying you don't need to talk about it, but the fact that it manifests in various ways. You see it with one of your heroes, Jay Z, as well. We don't know what his journey is because I haven't heard him speak about it. But you see in how he's grown, grown his hair and gotten dreads. Obviously, oh, Bob Marley, you see Trevor Noah now at some point as he became more and more successful, stopped with a brush cut and looking fresh. We don't know what journey he's been on. Could we argue that African spirituality as a concept is very much about studying self, knowing self? I have said to people before, we've got the EFF and Julius Malema now who speak about economic freedom in our lifetime. The people before wanted maybe some type of political freedom, but in actual fact, they wanted the land more than anything. Could it be argued that one of the biggest struggles and fights for our lives and maybe our generation could be missing is go and find out who you are. The biggest fight, and it's not going to be easy. There's family secrets, there's beef, there's monies that are owed, there's, this was not really your father. Maybe one of the things we need to be fighting, because if you look at some of the most successful groups to what you're saying, they've got documented in books, their lineage, their history. They've got a family crest. They've got a family coat of arms and, 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 and. And in the knowing of self and studying yourself and maybe even documenting it for future generations, maybe part of the wisdom and the manifestation, if you look at some of the wisest men, Rabbi Manus Friedman, you look at Joshua Maponga, you look at other rabbis, you look at gurus, Indian gurus, you look at the biggest popes and the, a lot of them and it's almost like there's an alignment that once you become a free man and a deep thinker and a philosopher and an understanding of what life really, really is, you become nature itself and you become a lion, which is what you are and you become a tree because it is no longer about pruning what is you because I now know myself. And Klampe Maubo Nunchebe who takes a beard gang know that this is because this guy knows himself because the person who's still lost is going to try so hard to hide who they are ujesu shanga yinje benga kanani nasimbone ithombeni and then abanye nabakhuluma ukuthi bafunda i revelations and then kuba ne argument ukuthi no ujesu wayo umuntu onjani wayo umuntu omnyama na etc still even another argument ukuthi wayo umuntu omnyama still i depiction yakhe na umbheka umuntu onenshebe yes and then, so yeah, Buza learned it. Okay, in Jobabati, all these years, na si yegi nyeleze tu tina si babi, no masi messi. And I just heard you now, and, and I know that you are an enlightened person, but you say fresh. You know, the definition of Uguba fresh. Correct. Unas kundurang fresh, mfan. You the fade there, you know, we all come from there. And nam pumara, you know, specific about the way in kundang al chiskopia melibe, melibe, melingibi, you know? But as Ukula, then you understand, I would say, um, a lot of these things, it's just knowledge that was imposed on us. And also just the perspective that has been changed in us to see things the way we were told to see them. Mm. The more you get to understand this news, and now it's like this. 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 You know? And... 
In knowledge of self is exactly what you're saying. It's the best knowledge you can ever attain, Lam Sabin. And I always say, even when I distracted, just this red race that we're in and just the system that is organized, <laughs> you can't change it. It's a red race. You must be chasing the cheese, right? I don't know if you know the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Mm -hmm. You must be chasing this cheese consistently. It's either you or it's going to be another red, but it's a system. It's like that. It is the red race. Up until you attain certain knowledge of where you start seeing things differently and you start making certain decisions to position yourself differently, to not continuously become uh, a part of this red race longer. And even though maybe you become, still become a part of it for another few more years, but then you're starting to plan things. So you sort of eject yourself from this red race, from this distraction that has been put in us. But the main thing that we are meant to do here, Um Klaben, is to serve our purpose and procreate. But we need to know ourselves. We need to know who we are. Melissa's And Baluleke cool, Mr. Penzo. And I think a lot of young people and I understand it's not only young people living in Nabazalbe, it's even Nazi. It's a system, as I say, it's a red race. There's a lot of destruction. So when we were put in a pause during the lockdown, COVID-19 lockdowns, it gave a lot of us an opportunity to search yeah. and learn. Yeah. And I think that's when the turning point happened for a lot of people. I for myself, it happened just a few more, a few years just before that. Yeah. But that gave me an opportunity to then really do the research and yeah. the digging down of everything. But if yes, we understand that the indoctrination is so deep that yes. now we are older. It's not easy to unlearn or reverse it, but at least because uma decide noma when the mat decisions uno loaz when the mat decisions are because man is so yazi. Even the indoctrination is difficult to you are aware of it. Oh, I, I, I heard um, Mr. Julius Malema the one time, I don't know if it was an interview or, or a speech where he speaks about even me, Julius Malema, sometimes meeting a white person, the consciousness <laughs> must kick in with, hey man, hey man, don't try those nonsense with me, you know? I saw that. <laughs> you know? He sort of acknowledges now, it would even himself, being an enlightened black yeah. brother that he is, even himself, he acknowledges that that indoctrination runs deep. Yeah. And, but, but it's good when you know, mm -hmm. because when you know, now yeah. ourself, now is a maflop we has born. Sure. But it's, um, the definition of freedom or the definition of living a great life, you'll understand it once you go down that rabbit hole of knowing self. And it's a long journey. Yeah. It's going it's to take many, many years. But once you start going down that rabbit hole, I'd like to encourage you to do more of it. Mm -hmm. Because then you're cool. Automatically, you're cool. And then when this is in and then wisdom oozes out of your mouth as well as you share. But with the indoctrination, yes, in public, because of also this misinformation and these different African spiritual leaders are saying this rhetoric, others are saying this message, it's confusing yeah. for young people. But it's good that those conversations now are being had. And it's good that now we are open about having those conversations. When people say, hey, we buy sango maglamalanga, so we fashion, hey, this African spirituality, one, two, three, I like it. I love those conversations happening. And even with the guests that I'll have, even on my platform, um, I don't see them as low right, low wrong. Nam mo cause nam self angas. Nyaba lalela ni zenzela mi nama decisions wami. Ni zenzeli research yami. And then me na self gula information aban kayayon. Nya is safer in my own way based on even nezing using things as your orring is keleza. Kimok bonan ting oh okay. Ah, mar, maybe on ka wu misinformed hai bea so mar maybe o right mara. Maybe the way I be an cutting. Based on your bun senya kon would lay information in yeah. before I can take it in. But, but I listen, yeah. I learn, I don't dismiss information, I don't cancel people, I'm learning from everyone and yeah. my ears are open. But it's, um, it's a, it's, I'm glad that I went down this route. At the beginning of last year, I don't know the exact number, but The Hustler's Corner was at maybe 45,000 subscribers. As we filmed this, we you're almost at 240,000. And I'd like to say congrats not on the numbers. The numbers are, it's like getting an award. Congrats on the, on the conversations and the interviews and the influence. The people that have been unearthed on the Hustlers Corner. The people that, I mean, things like in Zalo Yelanga, African New Year. 
when you speak of Ompo Badimo on that platform, it's affected mainstream news. It's affected global, a global audience. I want to say congrats and I want to say thank you for allowing me to be part of that journey. From what The Hustler's Corner was when you gave birth to it, to what it is now, what are your thoughts? And then what is your vision for The Hustler's Corner, number one? And maybe even just for the podcast industry, locally and abroad. And I need to give a shout out because as you said, Revolt, I saw a post. I, I, don't, I hope you're not leaving us. I saw that you're going to be working with, I don't know if it's with Farai, with the guys in Revolt in America. If Bazok Tat and Jengo Trevor know how you're spanning that, Jengo Daily Show, or what your vision is, just for the Hustlers Corner and, and podcasting here. Nyabonga when I'm for it. And congratulations to you guys, you know, with, with this platform. I appreciate seeing people build. I know how painful it is. I know how challenging it can be. Um, but I also know how exciting it is when 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 what you are building is starting to sort of bear fruits. Mm -hmm. We all can see um, the podcast and chills growth and you know how it has inspired the podcast industry in this country. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful to see them there, but you can only imagine the pain and the challenges I've had to go through building from scratch. And I also have to acknowledge you as well to for coming on board and assisting to build that machine. As I did mention earlier, with every other thing that I've ever done, I've always partnered with people. I've never done anything by myself. Mm -hmm. And you sort of became that, you know, a brother that I could bounce off ideas with, a brother, a brother who sort of um, contributed in giving that platform um, some sort of direction. And you contributed your own expertise and your own intelligence, um, even from a distance. Sometimes you might not have been aware, but uh, you inspire a lot of people, you inspired a lot of us also to also start having these, you can call them quote unquote intelligent conversations or, 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 or so you may. And it was beautiful to have seen the possibilities that are in this space. Mm -hmm. And I think we immediately did not stop, I and mean, we were also not selfish because I yeah. saw a lot of people who, who built YouTube platforms, they, they became quiet about it. For some reason when their YouTube sort of, when they started building on YouTube, a lot of them, yes, they would use social media, but they were not as busy or as loud as they used to be on socials. Mm -hmm. Then And then you're all almost saying, I'm told on YouTube. And a lot of them sort of kept quiet about um, the positive spin-offs of what YouTube can do. Yeah. And, um, I think once you and I and some of us sort of sort of started experiencing this thing, we were, we were very open about very it. Very open, very vocal. Yeah, we're vocal about it. Guys, start podcasts. Guys, start your YouTube channels. Guys, it was as People if- People were hugging Imalia YouTube. How was it? How was it? What are you now, you know? I was like, well, why have these guys been quiet all along? Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, maybe I have a water. You know? But then you understand some, you know, they've got their own reasons. Yeah, yeah. But I think you and I came in, we were very bad about yeah. it. We were like, guys, come in. And I think uh, we have to sometimes give ourselves props because yeah. the growth of the podcasting industry, apart from McG, I think now that we are there sure. as part of the people who sort of have been contributing in this. And I mean, that's, that's how the platform has grown. Initially, I wanted to make it a, a network as early as early last year, mm -hmm. forming relations with people who own production studios, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but then I started understanding through my experiences of building Massive Metro and working at Massive Metro. Ogutu, once you immediately turn it on to a network, mm -hmm. um, based on the growth, the trajectory, historical data, and just how the YouTube algorithms work and how mm -hmm. one has learned them, I started seeing when you post this way or these number of times, or when you have these types of guests, or when you, it grows this way. The, you know, thank you. I'll make you an example, for instance. We did an episode with, um, we did an episode with Kolan Kumalo yes. from Sizoktola. We did that episode maybe two months ago. We put it out just last week. Kandi so happened, I think, to be parting ways uh, with um, I I Moja, Moja Love, Love yeah. last week. I think that's what I read uh, in the public. And then he started trending. For some reason, as we were releasing the episode, yeah. he's trending. So those type of things sort of influence yeah. how, you know, your, your platform does yeah. as well. And it so happened that it, co it coincided with him trending and it becomes yeah. a big episode. Because yeah. some people thought 
this is a new episode. Mm-hmm. Maybe we've just had a conversation. He's you trending. Know, Musbuda was like, just you know, say, let's yeah, shoot now. You know what I mean? Type of thing. But no, it's, but people still enjoyed yeah. the episode. But what I wanted to say to you is, this is the space and this is the place to be. You are independent. Yes, it might not be our platforms. It's American Silicon Valley tech companies, but they give us some sort of a head start to use their platforms to also build our own. Because yeah. you could be using this also to say, guys, go to djsmooth.co.za. Sure. Guys, go to the show.co.za, Building your own platform Correct. on the side. I used to follow a young man. He used to be incredible on YouTube. I followed him for many years. Who used to... Um, Give a lot of game, give a lot of gems, a lot of knowledge. His name is Young Faro. Yeah. He's not as how he used to be back then. I don't know what happened to Faro, but he's one of the earliest YouTubers that I followed. Yeah. He had a big platform now, six, seven hundred thousand subscribers. He had two, three other pages, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000. He was literally poor, but he used to use his YouTube platform to drive yeah. the traffic to his website. Yeah. And in his website, he used to have what they would call, he used to call Aten University where he teaches, yeah. shares knowledge with people. So this can give you that opportunity for you to have your own platform. Yes, YouTube will give you some money here and that's not a lot of money as you would know, but the platform is good because then at a later stage you can use platform, you can use the platform for other things. Yeah. As we, you know, we just shared with me, as it last week or the week before, what the great work that Mr. Beast has been doing, yes. building wells all over the continent. You know, yeah. you end up doing such things because yeah. now you've got a bigger platform. You can see McG is now extending his blessings to other people, yeah. where he's growing his podcast, also giving other people a chance. They've got a platform to yeah. build, take advantage of his platform, right? It's becoming selfless. Yeah. It's opening it up to other people. Those are the luxuries that you can start enjoying when your platform grows. Mm. The podcasting industry is the future. Everybody has to have a platform somehow. As much as you open a social media platform, build a platform where you can conversate with your friend, Mm. make it easier for yourself because, oh, I was making an example of why I I refrained from building it as a network. Sorry, I I off-ramped. You know? So when you're building a, a, a network, like what I learned at Massive Metro, you, put, you have to put together an infrastructure, you yeah. know. And you've got an infrastructure that you're building and people have to help you build and these people are not going to come here. Mahal. In yeah. New York, Sigma, look, Puma, let's visa. Who's the light drop in? In New York, what are you doing? The mundo is an I'm a microphone in New I'm a light go to be on, I'm a on in New sure. electricity at the end of the month. And if you add another platform, another podcast, you must get a researcher mm-hmm. or somebody who can maybe assist in terms of getting guests or researching topics or getting the guys to at least create good content that's going to be good for the audience. Sure. But also they've got their own time. As much as some of them, we might have agreements with them and say, sure. just like you and I, you know, the, we didn't have money exchanging hands, sure. but we were adding value into each other's lives, right? Other people might come with that agreement, but others might come and expect to be paid. But others will come and say, okay, cool. Say, okay, cool. I'll benefit through the audience that he already has. Mm. Let me partner with him while I'm building my own using his, I'm benefiting. So that does not necessarily have to be money exchanging hands, but Mm. I'm benefiting somehow. So it it will take those types of things, but the industry is growing, the industry is going far. I'd encourage as many people as possible to create even more podcasts. We saw how big the Nigerian movies were, even in South Africa, because as Africans, we are a storytelling continent. We love sitting around the fire and telling stories. And that's why podcasts are blowing up. And that's why the bold and the beautiful soapies, telenovelas about the river, about generations, Uzalo, Skim Sam, that's yeah. why they're so big. And that's why these people, this talent that participates in all those platforms, they become big yeah. as celebrities in their own right because we are such a storytelling continent. Yeah. We love stories. And that's how it's been from back in the day, hundreds of years ago, through all Coco, no Coco, Bo, Coco Bay, to all the way up until now yeah. as the world is evolving into this um, digital space. The digital space is exciting. It makes me happy. The opportunity with Revolt makes me happy. It makes me want to go do more. I could have done more um, if I didn't have so many commitments already by now. Yeah. But I ended up telling myself, okay, cool, let me fix a couple of things like Kaya Kala before one spends more time in the US. Mm. As you may know, since I've been working with you, 
communicating with the FDA, getting more fire registration into the US. It aligns with all of those plans as about revolt, et cetera, because mm. one is sort of one is sort of trying to set up Ngali, but at the same time I've got commitments. And with revolt, I'm not hired by revolt. I don't work for revolt. I have to use my own money to accommodate myself in the US, AUS, create my own connections. I'm not gonna get any check from revolt. It's a partnership where we are putting together content, we are, we are creating content together so that we use the revolt sales team yeah. to go sell this content to American companies who might be interested to invest in this podcast. Okay. But once they're interested and say, okay, cool, through our marketing budgets or marketing dollars, uh, we like that African podcast. We think maybe we can throw in, what's your, what's your rate card for yeah. that African podcast? Just imagine yeah. how positive those type of conversations conversations will probably be having. Ah, uh, maybe it's this much or it's this, and then there's that agreement between revolt and us. There's a split. Mm. I would rather have it that way rather than for revolt um, having had to propose a different deal in the beginning. And sure. that deal was, I'm uh, going to option us all. My option and I saw now it hiding CIA. Sure. Marsana Kon Ukael Mara Yabon. Marma no Munto Jengam or Puma Lapin Puma Kon and what everything that I've done Yakon Bon with the eye and those tied. Yeah. And Funi Kai and check me hast and those pande. I'm sure. And those Rafaela would in your plomarang, those Rafaela would in panding, create a content, and those Rafaela would in me. But to go manje, let me be honest with myself. I know that it's not the right time. I'm not ready yet. Let me just set up. Yeah. While I'm setting up that, there's going to be a time where I'm in your states for a little bit longer. How in your states for even longer, you know, that's when you're starting to see what Okim Kambi is in Josaki says. America, Queen, and Jenny Cool. Marangita, another thing is because of Bashanga Matol. Yeah. Now, totally new, as you would know, but the time's 19. Hmm. And that thing is attractive. I mean, imagine one client if they can say, We love that African podcast. We don't have much money, but ah, we, we, we only have for two weeks $50,000. That's all we have. We're so sorry. $50,000. We're an alcohol about you. You meet a mistake. Almost the meet, all right? So, um, yeah, so one is, is moving towards doing that global work. But gangan gangan. So I, I don't move like I used to as in Donna before. I used to get excited and yeah. just, you know, I'm seeing there and just up and down. But you take your time, you know, you, 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 you line things up, yeah. you, 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 you get your um, ducks in a row, you, you sort of set up relations, you start looking for accommodation, not a affordable accommodation so you don't go crazy of something that you can't afford. Yeah. And you, you know, so all those have to be calculated moves. It so happened, Guti, that deal happened quicker than I thought it would. Mm. And um, now I could not rush into things where Ngaz Gutingzo under deliver. Yeah. I had to commit, get the contract done so that I know that it's in the bag, but it does not stipulate to Skala sure. in two months, Skala next week. But as I was there last month to go record at the at the Revolt Music Conference, yeah. invite so I'm not going to invite her. So I'm going to invite just before I'm going to for like a week or so. But there's going to be a time, as I was saying, where one will then be based um cool or matter. But I mean I'm never gonna be somebody who's gonna move out of like us in your anywhere else because I love Umzans yeah. as much as I'm I'm excited about the opportunities that the US has to bring. I'm excited about um the amount of energy that one is putting in here. I know that I can put the same energy yeah. but then I know good see the, the results can be nineteen times um but in nineteen times over. As opposed to the same energy, yeah. rand. Rather, yeah. rather the Congrats, same energy, Buda, man. Rand. You, you know, there are, there's a new ad, yeah, Trevor Noah, which is pretty dope. And I think it's shot by a, a friend of his, Ukaya Langa. Yeah. And there were rumors around it. It just hasn't been confirmed that it cost 34 million rand. Now, the 34 million, if it's true, or you want to do the maths, yeah. I'll do the maths for you. Don't okay. worry. No, you don't, have, you don't okay. have to do the maths. Okay. So whether it's going to Trevor or it's going to the entire production, maybe it includes marketing. I went and I, I did what you are going to do now to convert it into dollars. And I realized it's close to 2 million US dollars. This is a Trevor Noah that even if the money was coming straight to him and even if that amount was correct, it's $2 million where this guy, when you look at how much he was getting paid at The Daily Show, at some point it was $16 million a season. 
This guy he books out huge holes, 40,000 people in Europe at $600 a ticket. You do the math, you realize $2 million is a lot of money for anyone, even for an American. But if you're quoting in $2 million, you're like, look, it's South Africa, I'm giving back. I would normally quote, maybe if it's Switzerland with uh, Roger Federer, there I quoted 5 million, 10 million, because they know my brand, it's global. Because it's home, maybe I'll quote 2 million. And then we lose our minds because it's 34. One of the lessons for me is for South Africans, and you look at Black Coffee, you look at Otu Sombedu, other people, etc. Once you realize that you are world-class, Shama Piano, you play for the Springboks, you are Pesitao, you are a global businessman. Once you are world-class, you have to price at, at world currencies. It's the most important lesson for people to understand. And it's not, I mean, you look at the game farms in South Africa. If you go to their websites, they are quoted in dollars. Sometimes they'll give you an option in euros because they are world-class. Yes, they're in South Africa, but that's how they're dealing. And it's one of the ways the West, Europe in particular, America, it's one of the ways they exploit us because they will pay you a fair value for more fire, but then they will pay you in rands, the rand value, not the dollar value. And if we were to just adjust that and say, but my beverage is world-class, like whatever international energy drinks are, so I'd like you to pay me at that rate. It's one of the issues we have currently with even these platforms that pay overseas content creators differently from us. Even though when you look at maybe views and traffic and, and, and why are we not being paid fair for the same traffic if people are spending the same and, and, and. So it's, it's something that I had to learn or I'm learning. And it's something that I hope we impart on other people so that they learn. Because even in South Africa, we have a similar thing. What I price in Newcastle, where I come from, is very different from what you price in Johannesburg. The cost of living here is different. Traveling from a place to a place, the cost of my rent, the cost of my food is different. But now I'm uh, not world class, but I'm a national class. <laughs> so when I quote in Newcastle, I have to explain, guys, but I get booked in, in Johannesburg, in Cape Town, in maybe I can reduce for you guys, but understand that I'm a, I'm a national brand or I'm a continental brand, I'm Burner Boy, I'm an international brand. I can give you a discount because you're, you're my home, you're Africa, but already in Yakala, it's because I'm international. And the sooner we take ourselves seriously, if we were to do this with our commodities, gold, platinum, chrome, and we actually sold them in pounds and euros and dollars because they buy them in rents. So even, <laughs> anyways, it's a conversation for another day. I've missed you very much. And one of the things I've, I've learned is making friends with high performance people, successful people, inspired people, game changers is one of the worst things you can do because they are never available. It's, one of, it's like a woman that chooses to date a billionaire or marry a multimillionaire. The guy's not gonna be around, too busy. If Funumchi that's gonna hold your hand the whole day, it's that unemployed guy who's doing nothing. So when you befriend people like Os Buddha, they never hear. And uh, people won't see it, especially because of online content that pops up every now and then. I don't see you uh, a lot. We do chat now and then on socials, but I just want to say I've missed you a lot. And it's nice to be here with you. And I, I do hope we'll, we'll sit down again soon and catch up, man. We get to catch up. The world gets to catch up and they get to learn when we catch up. No, thank you, bro. I'm also very happy to see you in Kumbulile as well, you know. Um, Trevor Sam Sanyel. You know, um, it's unfounded the uh, type of noise or negative noise that we're making because then we wouldn't be able to get an opportunity to experience coffee. So much so that we schedule here the whole year, we check out my seasons work, and then now I'm checking this is a grand grand every year around this time. Yes. Can I see coffee? Around and November. And he always perform this scrap yard in Newcastle. Yeah, so it's it's Uber everywhere, Uber everywhere, and they've got that um event yeah, kind of euphonic that they do in December. Yeah. So that's when you know what is off season or like who sends any favor. Yes. Trevor, I think. I don't know, I'm not privy to those conversations. Who yeah. sends any favor? You know? And and congratulations, that's a dope ad. That's yeah. an amazing ad. But also, Trevor is world class, bro. Trevor hosts the Grammys. 
Trevor rubs shoulders with the best of the best. We've got amazing, amazing, inspirational young people in this country that are doing world-class work. Yeah. And if we want them to assist us, although they're busy with their duties, sure. international duties, they're not government, they're not meant to do us any favors. Yes. They also come from here. And when they say, okay, let me give back and charge next to nothing, like Aslam, we say 10 bis. Tengaba charge 10 rand because we say Aslam. Sure. It's fine. Chance in Kaini 3 rand or chance in Kaini 4 rand in Zoshai round. Still, because of our corner, I'm trying to be about to decide to go to the house. We are trying to find some 4 rand. Still, by one and a tip higher. And so I kind of feel we are being unfair to the chance. We are being unfair to Tuso to expect it to do us favors yeah. because of what we can't expect Usis Nomzamo, Utrevo Kofi, Ukasta Simenya, and all these incredible people that are doing work in Tenabo, Tyler, and them. No massive sense any favor. We are able to favor, Leah, and I'm definitely sure that bill would have been 10 times yeah. more or 20 times more. But you can see it's it's he's doing us a favor. So and for me it makes me proud because yeah. those are the conversations we've been having in the industry. Sometimes we don't even have to have them because we can fill up the stadiums ourselves. Boom. Isn't it how um Kespanyov has started filling up the stadiums? Because we are capable enough. And even when they want to come and use our talents like us, shout outs to Netflix. Thank you for coming and contributing into the acting and film industry or culture in our country. But then again, how are you gonna pay our actors? Yeah. How are you gonna pay our actresses? We're gonna complain in the corner and say, why was Khafang Amar Randi, as we are saying? Sure. They must pay these guys in dollars or they must pay them according to international standards. Yeah. And it is full local. So Naseba La Paya Naseba Pata Lagula my international standards. Yeah. Says Funu Guti Naseba Zwagara Nga Ibas Chunele Favor. Naseba Chunele Leo Favor Leo. Seba to Kege. Tetelan Gangaga. Still say a color. So I don't know what is Funan. And obviously, Abantu is what is color because Imali. Because Abantu is not a lot A lot of young people don't work. So to other people, it might seem like a lot of money. But to tell you the truth, for somebody of, at, uh, of Trevor's standard, yeah. that's nothing, bro. We need to educate. We need to educate people. Especially if you say something as, as simple as, if, if Trevor Noah was paid $2 million for that ad, We'd like whoever commissioned the ad to give us a report back in a year, two years, five years to say, this is how much we've made in tourism from that so that you guys can keep quiet. And that tourism money we made from Trevor speaking to his entire audience is creating jobs for you guys. Yes. It's helped pump, pump money into Ama BNB, Umama that sells beads, the guy who dances, the guys who host these things. They, when you saw those Germans and those French people and those Americans that were there, it was because of that ad. Exactly. So we, we need to educate people and educate them in the importance of that because there was an uproar with budgets for Tottenham Hotspur and stuff. And I think what was missed was the explanation of how these things come about so that in future, ordinary South Africans, when they hear that government spent this or SA Tourism spent this, they must be like, before we criticize, these are the five questions we want to ask. Before we tell you what known as Dagel, Rather take that Tottenham Hotspur money, give it to Podcast and Chill, The Hustlers Corner, The Panel Show, because these guys have got an audience. Why are you giving that money to an American actor? We've got Trevor Noah, we've got Tusombed. Why are you bringing in an international what what? We've got an African brother, Ben Boy, who can work with to black coffee. Because we've done the calculations and we can tell you these guys overseas can also fill up Madison Square Garden or the O2 in London. So we appreciate what you're trying to do in the ROI, but we'd like to suggest this. Mm. Rather pump the money in, in South African football mm. rather than a Tottenham Hotspur and make sure every PSL team is written visit South Africa mm. as an example. Mm. So then it's a, it's a smarter engagement more than just speaking from poverty. Mm. So, so <laughs> we, we, we have to educate the people. And you know how people want to die here. <laughs> Buddha, thank you very much, man. Let's shut this down. Any last words? Good to see you, bro. Proud of you guys. Let the industry grow. Let's keep putting in the work. Let's keep creating the content. You can make a lot of money out of these platforms. You can make a lot of money online, learn online. But guys, as much as there's a lot of negative news that is out there in the news, in the newspapers, sometimes it trends, etc. There's a lot of positive things that are happening in our country. And there's also a lot of opportunities that are out there. And I think we don't speak enough about that. There is a lot of also people making money online there's a lot of ways to make money online find out ways how to 
blah, blah, blah. Even just here on YouTube, just go how to, blah, blah, blah. There's an answer for anything. Most probably somebody has already done a video on that. But other than that, it's not all um dark. It's not all bad. It's not all, at some point, Nassisa in Dona, many years ago, you'd be hearing people saying they're moving to Australia and they're leaving this country. <laughs> There's people like me who are optimists, who yeah. believe in this country, who believe in the future of this country. There's people like me who believe in a lot of the young people of this country and a lot of amazing work that they're doing. And you can just see a potentially brighter future for our country. Mm -hmm. And I think the more young people find ways to enrich themselves, make a living for themselves, support their families, the better. Yeah. Because we understand you and I, Guti, Africa is the youngest continent in the whole world. Yeah. And the most important people that matter in this country is our young people. So when young people find ways to express themselves, to get their talents out there, they must also know that they can do that while monetizing those skills of theirs and learning how they can monetize their social media and make money on the internet. You mentioned Abu B.I. Pusha. You mentioned Abu, um, Abu La Chief. There's many other guys. B.I. Pusha. Yeah. B.I. Pagati. Oh, shout out to P.A. Pagati, <laughs> by the way, for the incredible work. Now, you, P.A. Pagati, yeah. is doing such incredible work, so much so that I can imagine how much money he would make online and how much of that money he gives back 100%. to the people. Yeah. So there are ways of making money online. And as we were saying, information. But now, where people are starting to wake up with diamond. So I'd like to encourage more of you guys to go search, search more ways on how you can change your lives because you can use this internet thing to change your life. So other than that, I believe in you. I love you. You're incredible, amazing. You're talented. You're capable. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're hot. You are of world <laughs> standards. Once you can understand that and that our country, wherever you go, anywhere in the world is a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. And once you are from Zanzi, that on its own blows people's minds away. And because there's so many of us about blind, like sometimes we tend not to realize is actually our own greatness. Yeah. Leave the country a little bit. Then you appreciate South Africa more. Yeah. And for, with that, those are my last words, guys. I love you and thank you so much, Penzo. And I'd like to appreciate the team as well. Um, also, Sizwe, Tebucho, Q, Yenzi. Oh yeah, Ting 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 is a foot Ting Ting is podcast and music festival. We're doing that on the 1st and 2nd of December. I don't know when is the screening. If it's screened after that, that's fine. Yeah. At least as this podcast industry is growing, there's people like me who are already seeing opportunities. Why don't we do a podcast festival? Yeah. You know, it, it, I'm looking forward to, uh, we've had that conversation with you having, oh, thank you, by the way, for saying yes to speak at the at the platform. Um, podcast and music festival, I'm putting out an EP, 1st of December. If this screens before, it's coming out on the 1st of December. Five tracks with Tina Ador from Kenya. It's a joint EP, so yeah. too incredibly talented sister. If this screens after the 1st of December, just know that I've got a brand new EP out there. It's good music. I've went all out. I've made sure that um, I, I I remind people. <laughs> buy more fire, buy local. Buy local. Thank you. I see you in the So, I'm going to next door, Hustlers Con. Penzo show go se kaya ngapa go gama mngani bana go sibula go shukela bese siya nangale na bana go uza ngale koko uma mungtu mile bese so tela cha si pupu gangana se next door we out I'll see you soon bro yeah alright